hello everybody once again you join us here at vid iq and let me briefly tell you what goes on here every single tuesday at 3 p.m my time noon someone else's time 7 a.m someone else's time wherever you are in the world even if it's wednesday then i welcome you to the channel audits here at vid iq where what we do is we invite you into this lecture theatre, this learning hall, this classroom of YouTube education where you share your channels and allow us to critique, review, revise, determine the future of your channel. Not literally, but we kind of offer advice, guidance, tutelage, strategy, wisdom, knowledge, power and a little bit of comedy along the way. My name is Rob, as you may have just heard. This is vidIQ, and we are creator obsessed about your YouTube journey. And as always, I cannot do this live stream without a fantastic co-host to join me. We switch the hosting duties every single week. This person hosted last week. I will be hosting this week. Who knows what's going to happen, whether it technically goes right or whether we just run out of energy in the last five minutes, which is definitely what happened last week. But we've had some prime this week, or maybe we've had some rhyme. I, I don't know. I'll have to check in with our co-host, Dan. Are you on the uh, rhyme this week? Mm. Y yes. Yes. If, if Folks, if you don't know what rhyme is... I love inside jokes. Love to be a part of one someday. Yeah, you, you may have to go through the archives of vidIQ to understand what rhyme is. Anyway, Dan, while mm -hmm. I uh, switch my slot back here to say that we are actually live, welcome to the audience. What's going yeah, on in your world? Uh, nothing. Yeah, YouTube. Been doing some YouTube. Um, I have a poll up right now, and I just wanted to, I was, I'm curious. Right now, 61% right. of you were saying, no, this is not your first vidIQ live stream. Watch as the day goes on, as that shifts back. And we ended about 50-50. That seems to happen a lot. However, there was an extra live stream last week from John. There who was. started uh, a semi-regular live stream where uh, he's going to be looking at other aspects of your YouTube channel. Last week it was thumbnails. Mm. And it wasn't just regular thumbnail advice. It was, hey, I'm going to take your thumbnail, bring it to Photoshop, and kind of mess around with it a little bit. So I highly recommend, recommend that, going back and watching if you're looking for some thumbnail tips. So you know, maybe you know less what? of you are now new because you saw that. You know what I loved about uh, John's live stream was that it was so chilled and relaxed. He had that kind of very laid back um, vibe about him, even though like he was under incredible technical pressure because like yeah. literally a minute before he went live, the thing that you see here just completely broke. StreamYard yeah. was not working. Um, but yeah, he, he just rode with it like you do with live streams. You just you just let live streams happen to you in, in a sense. And uh, the, the value I think many creators got out of that was immense so yeah as dan says john is going to be returning for those live streams not every single week uh we'll, we'll see how it goes at the moment we'll you know get the the gist the vibe the feedback from you uh, but yeah stay tuned for them that's one of the reasons actually you know i don't usually say this but when it comes to the live streams it actually is worth subscribing so you can turn on the notification bell so that you do get notified when we go live because right now my camera is working and we're hey. out 1,827,231 subscribers on our personal mission to hit 2 million subscribers by the end of the year. It is still touch and go because I think we're actually on course to hit 2 million probably late December, unless you change that one way or the other. So we'll keep track of it, but I'm kind of just keeping like a, a loose visual and mental note every time uh, we go live. But we'll get into the uh, nuts and bolts of what this live stream is. And because so many of you are new, you may be unfamiliar with how this live stream works. And so we have a very handy one minute tutorial that shows you how all of this is going to work for the next couple of hours. And it looks a little bit like this. Welcome back, creator. Here we go again. This is your weekly YouTube channel audit live stream. All you need to do is use the correct link in the description, fill out the form, and we'll consider your channel for review. 
That's right, channel reviews are free, but you can send us a super chat and watch us discuss your question live on air. You can get a channel audit anytime you want by downloading vidIQ and asking our AI coach to give you one. Or take your channel to the next level with one-on-one -on -one coaching for your channel from a human coach here at vidIQ. If you submit your channel for review, expect the following. We will share with you our knowledge, experience, and passion as fellow YouTube creators. I want to do a quick shout out to all of our moderators who do an awesome job on the live stream every single week. You know who you are. And with the introductions done, it's over to you. What channels have you brought us this week? Yes, tweaked that uh, intro again to try and fix the audio issues. I still don't know if I've done it. That Dan, that studio right now is driving me nuts because <laughs> I'm trying all sorts of solutions to reduce the echo, and it's just not working. It's just not Good. working. I'm just gonna, I'm going to try or again padding. next week. Hmm? Furniture and padding. You see, I thought that was solu the solution, but I think what might be the problem is I am dead center in the room when I'm recording. So I'm like the most distance away from all of the walls. Usually like I'm recording where there's a wall just directly to one side. Um, and if I padded the entire room, that would cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Not uh, your money. Oh, 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 that's interesting. I didn't realize this. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. This, this deserves this button. All yeah. right, all right. Maybe a few more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Folks, uh, as well as the uh, free channel audits, we do super chats whereby you can send us a little bit of money. We don't really care how much. Like we, we, you don't have to Rob's break a threshold. Budget. It will go on the studio budget, though. Yes, but you can send us whatever amount of super chat you want, and then ask a question that is community centric. Try not to ask a specific question about your question of your channel because we'll find it really difficult to answer because we're not auditing channels through Super Chats. But it does allow for interesting conversation and debate. And there's a reason we do that as well, uh, because it kind of adds that you know, human touch to your YouTube journey, which we'll go into a little bit more detail later on. Uh, so send us any Super Chats sooner rather than later, because we will answer them. Towards the end of the live stream, it gets a bit hectic, and we might not be able to answer them. And just a final disclaimer, as always, if a channel comes our way, which we think is inappropriate for universal audience, we'll just apologize and say we can't audit it on this live stream because we've got to think about our audience. But with those housekeeping moments done, Dan, are you ready to audit our first channel? Yeah. All right, then. So I present to Dan and all of you watching this live stream, our first channel that submitted on the forms that are in the description this week that caught our interest and they go by the name of wordpress tutorials and fun they're guaranteeing fun with their wordpress tutorials mm -hmm. techie reviews approaching 400 subscribers with just 38 videos so that's an average of 10 subscribers per video which is interesting i'm going to hand it over to dan now for his first impressions on what you think this channel is about and you know the opening um i guess Opening words of debate on what makes a good channel. Okay. For, no, for, hold on. <laughs> Please tell me you are not by hand updating your channel banner every single time you get a new subscriber. You see, I think the answer is yes, because when I first loaded up this channel earlier on, it said 379 subscribers. There are Dan, automated tools that can automate this yeah okay. it, because i've seen this little tool here as well which does the counts so i think what you do is you tie it into some api that looks at the uh, channel um you know a channel stats and then updates the banner periodically i don't know maybe every five minutes ten minutes it's okay. fine if i want to do that i'm not going to complain about it all right as long as it's not something you're taking time on um because <laughs> indeed yeah it really 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 only matters to you you know, most people who watch channels aren't worried about how many subscribers this channel has, unless they're like us, YouTubers who are doing research, right? Um, in any case, uh, so you're doing WordPress tutorials. Uh, I don't know what and fun means. If I, I don't want to pick on your banner too long or anything. Uh, I just, and fun, it just sounds so vague when you, in that context. Anyway, let's scroll down a little bit. Let's see if it just sticks to WordPress tutorials or if there are like random bits of like, oh, what is that? You know, but mm -hmm. it looks like WordPress, WordPress, WordPress. Uh, view counts seem really healthy, especially for the amount of subscribers. I agree uh, with that. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, 
very straightforward titling here. We, we kind of know what we're going to get every time. I will say that the first real critique I have of the content itself is going to be the thumbnails because I think that they look fine. Like the branding is there and all that. But like, for example, the latest thumbnail, it kind of makes me think the last two thumbnails, actually, why have your face in them at all if you're going to put this purple gradient over it and we can barely see you anyway? Um, a, a face can sometimes help people like connect with you, you know, the eyes, right? And then like your eyes are almost closed in that latest one and it's like this purple gradient. You know, I, I feel like you could be doing a little bit better of a job if you're going to be adding you to the thumbnails. It is an interesting question, isn't it? About whether the creator is ready to uh, fully commit to the YouTuber face. And it feels like they've not gone that far, but they do want that, as you say, Dan, kind of maybe that unique... Um, branding and connection with the audience but it yeah. ends up in this gray scale or blurred in the back not not blurred but faded into a background type of look and i'm kind of yeah. with you on that one and then for the more like technical aspects of the thumbnail or or like uh I, I would say the more clear advice i can give you let's look at the second to last thumbnail where it says loving it there are a few small changes that i want to the buttons now what i think happened here is that they're talking to like either a, a person or chat GPT or something. And they're trying to showcase that you can make a website just by typing in things. However, there's a way simpler way to communicate that. That's a lot of text. It's small. It's hard to mm. read. You could have just said, make me a website. Like a lot of channels that are showing off a chat GPT yeah. tool, just make it like silly to the point where you wouldn't actually put that in the video, but it's, you're just trying to get a point across in the thumbnail. You don't have to make it like buy the book. Okay. This is a blurb that I used in the video. So I'm going to put it in the text message box on my thumbnail. Just, just make it really, 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 really simple for the audience. You could be mistaken if you're just quickly swiping through and you catch this thumbnail, but you don't read the text. For all you know, this could be a, like a dating story. Yeah. From a from a, if you don't read the text, like once you read the text, then it makes a bit more sense. But I'm with you, Dan. That you just need to slap the viewer in the face as they're scrolling to catch their attention, and they're what ten words there I'm just going to make it a bit more of a struggle and then the last thumbnail thing i want to say is thumbnail thing last thing i want to say about thumbnails is the the third video there getting started with green shift i think and they do this a lot this big purple border you put and then you have like the website template kind of in the middle of it it's already a lot of text and a lot of information it's already kind of hard to see and you're zooming it out even further you know i mm. would look at other wordpress tutorial thumbnails and see how they're communicating because I think what you'll find is that it's, it's again, about just demonstrating a clear message to the potential viewer. You'll find that they're doing probably a good job of making it clear when you see something like, oh, that ex that's exactly what I'm trying to learn how to do in WordPress. Perfect. You know, and with these, I have to dissect them for so long. So here we go. Let's do it. This, this is, uh, I continue to say that this is kind of like the how to anomaly creator, Kevin uh, Stratvert, who can jump from topic uh, utility topic to utility topic and get hundreds of thousands of views whatever he does it, it's incredible I, I credit him for how he does it um but he'll do wordpress excel uh google extensions all sorts of stuff and um, but yeah i i'm not gonna say that's a great thumbnail he's just very very simple the way he does his thumbnails i would say that the our hero channel should try to dethrone that video that should be a goal of theirs they should try to make the same video from their perspective mm. wordpress tutorial for beginners and try to rank in place of that video you are focused purely on wordpress there's no reason why you shouldn't have a video that's ranking somewhere in here yeah because um a lot of these uh tutorials are quite specific we're going into something called green shift. So, you know, maybe let's just do a quick search for that and look at what we might call the total addressable market of this type of content. And, you know, something, I mean, this channel itself is reviewing, is ranking at the top of the search term, 2000 views, another channel, 2000 views. So there's a very limited audience here. And we're not saying that you shouldn't do these videos because you're becoming the authority on this keyword, which is great, fantastic. Um, but I think we've shown there, Dan, that there's a big total addressable market of WordPress, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are watching some videos 
and maybe this channel lacks some of those big evergreen pieces of content. Mm. Like we, we look at each individual video, 400, 200, 600, 200, 600 views versus a channel with 400 subscribers. Hey, that's not bad, but we probably want to see a, a few significant outliers here. A couple of videos with tens of thousands of views and at the moment they're just not having that big reach which this channel probably deserves at the point they're at their youtube journey yeah with, with the green shift thing the late the, the most popular video here is effortless wordpress bento grid with green shift tutorial now i was just going to say before you clicked on popular i need to know as a layman what does green shift do because maybe i'm trying to make a wordpress site but i've not heard of all these tools and so i'm not going to be searching for green shift i don't know it exists but with that video, it makes sense because it's like, I'm trying to make a, a bento grid. Oh, this person's using green shift for that. I've never heard of that. I'll click on the video and learn more about it. So again, when you're titling your videos, just for advice for everybody, be thinking about the potential audience who you're trying to reach. If it's beginners, they may not know about the tools that you're covering, which means you need to pitch the video to somebody who has never heard of the tool before. And so you can include the tool name at the in the title, but maybe towards the end, like the like the creator did. I'm trying to do a specific thing, and I'm using this thing to do it. Tutorial. Expanding out, then Dan, I, I think GreenShift is a plugin for WordPress. So if you try to um, maybe do some comparisons, like what type of plugin is GreenShift, and I don't know, maybe it's an animation plugin. I don't know, but it might allow you to do some comparisons, like the best five animation plugins. And GreenShift is one of them. And so you can you can still talk to your existing audience, but try and reach a much bigger, broader audience. And I think these are, a, a, I would say, the next level up in terms of thumbnails uh, in, the, in the WordPress area, some of these anyway, um, compared to what we've seen on our Hero channel. Um, but, you know, going back down, we, we, we think that this channel has got to a point where they're established now. Them do doing some good things, but I think there's like four or five things that we've discussed there, particularly in thumbnails and particularly in, um, I guess, packaging or expanding the audience where to be able to improve a little bit. Yeah, I think it's really the pitch of the videos. Uh, they're doing a, a good job. It's just something they can brush up on as they make more videos. That is techie reviews, and that's essentially how these channel audits work every single week. So if you found that audit useful, even if it wasn't your channel, you know, we talked about some basic stuff there in terms of thumbnails and uh, targeting the audience correctly, then give us a thumbs up. Go on, give us some positive engagement. If not, you're banned. I don't know oh. how I ban you. I'll figure out a way after the live stream. Next though, Dan, uh, we're going to audit a gaming channel. This is the first gaming channel that submitted that caught our interest uh, from the gaming form because we split our forms in two because we have so many gaming creators here. Uh, although much of what we'll talk about is relevant to all creators, we're looking at one smart cat. That reminds me, actually, one smart cat. I love being able to use that. All right. Um, can, so can you do me a favor? Can you look for yeah. a channel called Scooty? It's S-K-O-O-T-I-E. That one? Yeah. And then uh, click in there. I just want to see yeah. if he's played this game and click on videos. Okay. So it was there. Now, if you scroll down a little bit more, where'd it go? Okay, there it is. Gun Deck Builder. All right. Look at that in the top left. All right, so pay attention to this title and thumbnail. So it's just very simple. Gun deck builder, apparently a revolver, like a revolver roguelike exists now. Now, Scooty does um, roguelike games all the time. That's kind of this bread and butter, okay? So I'm not saying like you're going to just be competitive and, and just rank like this channel is overnight. But let's go now back to the hero channel. Okay, because okay. the first video I noticed I'm, was I'm about... I'm trying to find out where this is going, Dan. Okay, that cool, game. Cool. So buckshot roulette made it to steam what's new multiplayer okay I, I think that's the same game i could be wrong but i'm just gonna say like when you compare the two like the thumbnail and title we just saw with this it's night and day yeah i'm having to dissect so much there's a character in the background that's really dark and ominous the text is hard to read at the top the text on the bottom left is really thin also not great and uh, I get the the cat avatar is like their branding they're putting on all the thumbnails. You know, we could talk about that more in a minute. Um, but I it, it doesn't tell me what the game is. And when you're going to play games on your channel that a lot of people haven't heard of, or maybe they're gaining popularity, you would hope, 
you need to be more clear about like what the heck it is. So Scooty was saying this is a a rogue like deck builder about guns or whatever. Like the the title and thumbnail made it a little more clear because mm -hmm. maybe you've never heard of the game before. So again, it's about respecting the audience who has not heard of the thing that you're doing. And so I'm saying that just to just cover anyone who's like playing games that are a little less known. It's really about pitching the video in a way that's going to help get it views, whether or not people know the exact name of that game. I'm going to put this on screen, Dan. I don't know if it's true or not, but I think this person maybe knows it's not a little the bit same more. Game. It's part okay. of the game, same game. However, I do still agree with like the packaging of this thumbnail and title. Like, you're still not really being led into uh, a clear reason why you should be clicking on uh, this video. Uh, but thanks, community, it, for chipping in. Yeah, it's still it's still valid advice. I knew it was a risk bringing that up if it wasn't the same <laughs> game, but it's still valid advice because you could tell from all those th titles and thumbnails like kind of what's going on in each one. But just saying Buckshot Roulette is not really going to get me to click on the video as what as much as like what is Buckshot Roulette? What what is this specific game? Um more trending game on the left there. What do we what what do we need to do for fake views? Content warning. That's the name of the game. Um it's it's a little it's still vague, right? What do we need to do for fake views? Maybe look up content warning and see what other pitches people are doing for that game. You really want me to search for content warning on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> content warning game. Oh, sorry. Content warning. <laughs> Nothing could game. go wrong. This will be no, fine. Okay. Don't worry. If you say so. Wow, there's a lot going on with this game. It's very very popular right now. Mm-hmm. My content warning might be the funniest game ever. Okay, that that's a big promise. Content warning for noobs. Content noobs. warning was something. So you got a lot of you know obviously big channels playing this. I would say that thumbnail that's more colorful at the top there. Like uh, scroll up a little bit, a little bit more. This one. Yeah. Content warning is a stupidly funny horror game. I mean, RT Games just telling it like it is. You know. Uh, Again, very simplistic imagery, but this creator seems to really like to put the logo of the game in all of their thumbnails. Have you noticed right. that? And yeah. Yeah. the logos are great for the game's personal like marketing purposes, but they're not great for your, your YouTube thumbnails. You know, people who know this game, they'll they'll be used to like the imagery in the game. You know, people who don't know the game probably still aren't getting a lot from the logo being in the thumbnail. I know we're talking a lot about thumbnails the last couple channels, but it is the first introduction somebody gets to your content. No one's clicked on your video yet. So the best they will might ever do is look at the thumbnail and they may never become an actual viewer. So at the very least, you want your thumbnail to stand out and you want it to be something that explains what's going to happen. You know, it helps tell a story along with the title. And so that is where this channel needs to kind of like continue developing some skill sets. All right. What I want to talk about is actually a vidIQ tool. But there is a reason for this, because if you look on screen now, you will see one tiny little icon slash number that will, for me, tell you everything about this channel. And it is this thing down here that says 18x. If I mouse over it, this is the vidIQ outlier score. And what it tells you is when a video is performing well above average for the channel. In this case, this video is getting 18 times more views than the average for the channel. Mm -hmm. And it's based on the Texas Chainsaw Max Massacre. And when you start the to look at the, the videos around it, uh, we look at the Puppet Master, Earthless, Dead by Daylight, Bookshot Roulette, Content Warning. So this person is playing a lot of games. And when you go, huh, why did that one get so many views? Let's just see which of the most popular videos on the channel. Lo and behold, six months ago, this channel was wow. a Texas Chainsaw Massacre channel at mm. the game, obviously. So the creator has a dilemma here. YouTube has identified that the, that the audience that resonates most with the content that comes from this channel is this game. And no matter how much this creator tries to get away from this content, because you fed this to your audience, when they see these thumbnails for games they're not playing and they're not familiar with, 
they're not interested in. But when you just happen to do one on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, hey, no problem. Let the the, the audience floods back in. So Dan, yeah, where where do we go for this creator? Like but, f- for me, it's going to be you want you need to keep making videos about this video game and then try and do some comparisons with maybe the next game you might play that's very similar to it, etc., etc., etc. But I know you being the what we call a master of how to start a video game on YouTube, since your video ranks number one every single year, where would you uh, approach this? It, it's tough. Yeah, uh, let's let's go back to popular real quick. I did notice one one glimmer of hope here, and it goes back to Buckshot Roulette as well. Oh yeah, right. there is one there, isn't there? Russian cool. Roulette with a Buckshot Shotgun is stressful. Like it's such a great title. That like, is know... that is good packaging. Yeah. Right now, I know what Buckshot Roulette is. I didn't know a shotgun was involved. That's fantastic. So there is hope. Like. If you can cover games that would appeal to a similar audience, it seems like games that have maybe a little bit of violence in them, um, a bit of tension, things like that, then you can continue to rank outside of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But it's probably going to be a while before you get another run like we're seeing here because the game was probably trending for a bit. You were one of maybe a few people covering it. Who knows what the what the, all the recipe, all the ingredients were for that recipe. Um, but, you know, when you tried something different and you had a more clear title, it worked out pretty well. So that would be still the focus, in my opinion, and commit to being consistent to whatever like new thing you're doing, whatever new game that comes out, like just really like commit to it for a bit before giving up on it. Because when you look at the latest videos, it kind of feels like you're trying a lot of different things at once. I've been there for for sure. And uh, I see the temptation of trying a lot of different things at once. But you end up in kind of this like YouTube abyss because you're going to put just as much work into these videos as you were the last videos are doing well, right? And then when they're not performing, it, it, it kind of eats at you a little bit. And you're like, I'm doing all the same amount of effort and I'm not getting the results I used to get. And if you let that eat at you too much, it becomes harder to make content. It becomes harder to make content in the sense that you're still putting stuff out, but like you're not taking the time to be strategized, to take a step back and like evaluate your channel and figure out what could I be doing to kind of get back on track here. Uh, what what are what are some new games in in this category that I like and that my audience likes that I could be exploring? And look for some outliers. Look for some channels that are playing these games and doing pretty well based on their view count versus their subscriber count. A lot of you, the, our outlier tool does this. You have a lot of views for maybe not a lot of subscribers or normally they wouldn't get a lot of views. All of those things are good signals. So doing some research, taking a step back will probably benefit this channel a lot. Okay, Sue so Creators. We've audited two channels at this point, and I know some of you might be getting frustrated that maybe we're taking a while on these channels and that your channel may not be picked. But let's just think about what we've spoken about already. We've spoken about a channel that clearly has its focus and its niche, but maybe needs to broaden out its pitching to reach a higher total addressable market. And then on the other side of the coin, we have one channel that has a focus that really works, but they kind of push it to one side. These are things that can apply to your channel, no matter what your niche or topic. So really think about the channel focus things that we've already spoken about, which brings us on to Rob Wilson's self-indulgent gaming corner. Yay. Mm -hmm. With uh, additional fart noises. So what I would like you to tell me in the chat, and we'll bring up some of these uh, as we're discussing this, is what video game have you been playing recently? And can you rate it out of 10 and we're talking about in real life out of 10 not youtube one of 10 so like a 10 of 10 is good here uh in terms of a game you're playing or because i'm trying to appreciate what dan said in the past if you don't play video games what hobby or passion have you been indulging in outside of youtube to give you that balance in your life uh, that you've been enjoying over the last week. So, Dan, I'm going to throw it over to you first. What game have you been playing? And uh, here are some comments on screen. Uh, I've been getting back into some retro games. So mm-hmm. one I've picked up that I've never played before was uh, Zelda, the Minish Cap on Game Boy. Oh, I recently, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I recently rebuilt my Game Boy with uh, you know all the cool videos out there. Yeah, this is this is what happens when you use YouTube as a viewer and not for content creation purposes. You end up buying silly things like this so this is my old game boy in a new shell with a new screen it's awesome um so i've been messing with that what's um what's the the big game you've been playing on the game boy then so far minish cap minute sorry minish cap um sorry the question i was gonna (laughs) ask is i'm trying to remember was that the zelda game that was actually developed by capcom 
Yes. I know that sounds weird, but yeah, it was. They, yeah. Had that, they, they had that partnership, didn't they? Um, which was really interesting because I, I think I had the same game, but I never finished it. And I also wondered how Capcom was developing a Zelda game. It still felt like all the Zelda games I've played. <laughs> Indeed, absolutely. Dan continued to put up uh, games being played uh, or whatever pastimes have been partaken in uh, on screen. I am now fully into Ghost of Sushemi. Sushima, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I would describe it as this, Dan. It is, it has the battle mechanics of Batman <laughs> Arkham games, which is brilliant, but also the sprawling sandbox of any of the recent um, Assassin's Creed games like Valhalla and Odyssey. So it is brilliant. It's something that I can just jump on and have a 20 minute blast do loads of stuff and collect loads of items and feel as if I've made no progress whatsoever. But I kind of like that because I can do it for weeks and weeks and weeks. So you'll be able to ask me this next week, next month, probably for the next couple of months. Ghost of Tsushima or Sushemi is a sleeper hit, I would say. Brilliant game available on PSN. Uh, do check it out if you haven't and you're that type of gamer. Lots of games. I can't. I haven't seen like one game repeated there, Dan. <laughs> Sushi me, Sushi Moo. Somebody said Fallout New Vegas, and I've been noticing a lot of people talking about Fallout New Vegas. I wonder if it's because of the TV show. Yeah, it seems like everyone's be. going back to Fallout New Vegas, and I've never played it. I wonder must if I should pick, pick it up now. Well, everybody's having amazing gaming experiences at the moment. Like they're all nines and ten of tens, which is incredible. Like, somebody's had a fifty of one experience there. That's incredible. There must be. Must be really uh, doing well in the game. Anyway, that was a self-indulgent gaming corner. Uh, encouraging you to engage a little bit in the live stream. Uh, but now we'll audit another channel. And this channel goes by the name of uh, Adam Brick Reviews. They have 84 subscribers, 48 videos. They're on the march to 100 subscribers. And the thumbnails tell us... They are a legging, Lego, not legging, <laughs> Lego building channel. Huh. And Dan, I want you to introduce this uh, creator to our community. Yeah, uh, they are on their way to 100 subscribers. They have 48 videos. I'm assuming a lot of those might be shorts. Uh, they have some reviews of, of different Lego sets. And when I saw this channel, I felt like maybe we could help Adam skip a few steps uh, along their YouTube grind, if you will. Because there's a the big glaring issue here, you know, say it with me, thumbnails. Uh, again, because we need to do a little bit of research and figure out what do other thumbnails look like when people review Lego sets. And there's going to be some distinct differences that jump out as we do the search here. So we'll try Lego Perseverance Rover because I think that's from their latest video. Wow. All right. Wow. Clear. Improvement and difference from very experienced creators. Notice how the the rover itself is way more the hero yeah. in these thumbnails. And and a lot of Lego channels do use these white backgrounds and stuff and really nice, clean backgrounds. And that's intentional because the Lego sets stand out a lot more. You know, less is more when it comes to this because a Lego set in, in pretty much all of my experience is a very, like, detailed thing. So... Because you have this, this, these things made up of tiny little bricks and they're very, very detailed, you want to make sure your thumbnail is not super complicated so people can like make out those details and go, oh, I'm looking for this Lego set, actually. I wonder how much it costs, what people think of it, so on and so forth. But this channel has a lot going on. This purple misty background has like three or four different tones in it. The Ooh. rover... And there's one picture of it like dark and there's another picture with an arrow that's a bit brighter and then you have gray text which is just really hard to read on that background and then of course the lego logo which i think is implied anyway so you've kind of i feel like you've over engineered these thumbnails you know get it lego channel um there's you don't have to work this hard on on a thumbnail for from the this photoshop aspect what you need to do is work hard on taking a good picture in a nice decluttered environment and, and then Photoshop to just you to like level it up a little bit. Are you saying they're a bit too technic? Yes. Uh, yeah. For, for YouTube. Everyone's going to leave. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This um, cutting out of an object and then putting it into a colorful background, which kind of swamps the object. I think it, it does feel a bit, 
2016 when it comes to YouTube thumbnails. I'm, I'm just wondering, Dan, do you think uh, Lego sets are better suited to like a natural environment whereby it's just the good lighting and maybe a playing background, but in in the real world almost that looks better. I mean, we, we can go back to the some of the examples, even just like a solid white background mm. looks looked effective in many of these. We, we saw one that was taken outdoors, but even that background was nice and like yeah. decluttered. Like this one. That, that one is pretty cool, cool, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and because the rover is white, maybe a brown dirt background works pretty well. I mean, obviously. So there, yeah, there, I think different, different Lego sets will have different scenarios. Like the, the Winnie the Pooh, like tree house, that would have probably done really well on a nice white background because it has a lot of color to it. But you chose a forest background. So now the house is blending into the woods, which is not what you want. You would think that would be kind of cool. Like I'm going to put it in its natural habitat. Don't do that. It's a YouTube thumbnail. Make sure it stands out nice and clearly. So that is really, truly, I think, what's holding this channel back, other than the fact that this is just a competitive space. And yeah, yeah. just simply reviewing a Lego set may not be enough. The next phase of this, once they kind of, if they take our thumbnail advice on and once they make those changes, would be, how are you going to pitch this a little bit differently? You're a smaller channel. You're trying to stand out more. You're probably going to get some more views if you love up your thumbnails. But is there anything else you can do? Can you put these sets to the test in any way? Can you can you review them in such a way where you're kind of almost sharing your opinion a little bit more in the title thumbnail? Like, what kinds of things can you do that help you stand out from all of the other channels who have you know done some while? They have disposable income. They can go out and buy Lego sets all day long and review them all day long. Um, there's probably plenty you could do. I would just keep researching other channels. Um, to get some ideas. I was thinking the same thing, Dan, in terms of a, a USP for the channel, because it kind of falls into the same trap and danger of another let's play gaming channel. I don't think it's enough just to review Lego sets because many other channels are maybe doing that. Perhaps there can be a theme, like there's a space theme in some of these recent uh, Lego reviews, but if I remember rightly, we looked at a channel last week, which was all about modular builds, whatever, whatever they are. I think it's like having massive Lego sets that are built and then connecting them together with pieces. I don't yeah. know if they naturally modular together or they're just individual sets that can be slotted together. Yeah. They're going out and buying more pieces and then yeah. re-engineering a Lego set to make it even better. Uh, and that was their unique selling, uh, point. But this channel, as of yet, doesn't have it. And, you know, maybe they're, they're not yet there in a, a YouTube journey, Dan. At the moment, it's still just a case of, I want to find out if building Lego sets and filming them and sharing them with an audience is something that I enjoy doing and want to continue to do. Yeah. Um, but I think it, it is going to be a decision that they may, need to make soonish, or they're going to find that each video doesn't break 50 views. They do actually have, I think is their latest video. Their latest video is actually the most viewed video, which is, you know, a point for celebration. You know, you got a hundred, over a hundred views on, on this one, which is fantastic. Uh, so continue to work on that. But yeah, I think what both Dan and I are saying is thumbnails need some work. There's lots to research. We're not expecting you to be a, an amazing thumbnail creator overnight, but I think certainly those backgrounds are something you want to focus on. And what's going to be Adam Brick Review's um, pull factor? Like, why am I going to visit Adam to learn about Lego as opposed to other creators who are passionate about brick building? Mm -hmm. And I think with that, Dan, we'll move on to the next channel, uh, which is Vinterium dot dot Explorium dot one first of all what do you think the channel's about i am from italy and this is video exploring content in unique ways okay uh so it looks like they're exploring different historical landmarks old very old ancient like buildings things like that exploration i think that's like the simplest way to chalk this up like exploration in their specific locale now i guess the question i would ask you is it took you maybe like a few extra heartbeats or 
extra seconds to figure that out. I'll never get back. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And (laughs) I'm wondering why that is. And my guess is because English might not be this creator's first language, given that they say they're from Italy. And then when you try to read the about section and you try to read the titles, they're a bit of a hard slog. They're difficult to try and... um, Decipher. Untangle, decipher, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I think... That's going to be something that to invest a little bit in. Uh, maybe you can use ChatGPT or something to help, like rephrase the title in a bit more of a readable language for English speakers. If you're trying to cater to English speakers, mm. you know, could there be a reason to do this? If if you naturally speak Italian, could there be a reason to try some videos in, in your native language? I don't well, know. Here's another interesting aspect of this. So we do have English text on the thumbnails. However. If we watch one of these videos, Dan, you'll uh, oh, discover no. something quite quickly. Okay. Oh, well, oh. that didn't happen on the previous one. Anyway. There is no talking. Another day I'll to skip, explore. I'll skip okay. forward a bit. All right. I don't like the music. It's putting me off. <laughs> Don't mean to be mean. Now, but... curious you say that because uh, one, on one of the previous videos I watched, oh, it, must, it must have been one of the very old videos. Uh, let me go to the most popular. Where was it? I think it was this one from three months ago. There is no music. Go there inside. is no narration. Do they go inside? The, there is environmental sounds. Yeah. So there's all... There's, it's like a, a bit of an ASMR experience here of, a, of the breaking of the branches and the footsteps and the breathing as they're walking in and out of this oh, hut, I, I guess. spider webs. Oh, that's terrifying. Don't go in there. <laughs> right, Don't do it. Right, I, we'll, stop, we'll stop. We'll stop. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have told them to go inside. Um, <laughs> that That is what I think people want to see, though. They want to see like these old structures like in and out. I mm-hmm. think commentary would be great because there's probably a lot of history here. If you know anything about these structures at all, even if to you it's like trivial information, think about people around the world watching this who don't know these things. If you know, I saw some text on the newer videos, uh, but yeah, like something that kind of tells the story a little bit would probably help uh, with with just retention. Then again, that said, I don't think these are bad. I think it's kind of cool to just take your camera and go exploring, and it, it kind of breaks language barriers. It almost doesn't matter, yeah. you know. There's something to that for sure. Um, but you can always use captions to get other languages represented in there if you wanted to talk a little bit or have you had captions on the screen in the newer videos. Um, so, yeah, there's there's some definitely some things we can do. But let's once again, we need to focus on the thumbnails. I would say we the do. pictures they're taking are not bad, mm-hmm. but they could be leveled up quite a bit using some photo editing software. And the text isn't doing anything for them right now. I, I yeah. think the text should be like you know, a thousand years old with an arrow pointing or something simple. Like if you're going to use text, tell me an interesting fact or something, but let's explore. Isn't it's not, it's not going to even be seen. I don't think I'm I'm with you on that one. This one I could probably do with just a bigger arrow pointing to that hole uh, in the building. And when you say like, how could it be touched up in the thumbnails? We could probably sharpen up the image. Um, exaggerate the the colors a little bit to increase the saturation like on this one for example that would certainly uh, increase the blues and the greens it might help separate the the building itself out from from the background a little bit uh definitely this one i think you could certainly uh, saturate the the colors a bit more to give it more of a, a sense of pop uh from the thumbnails and yeah as i think dan is rightly as you said instead of let's explore or amazing how could you make that more intriguing to the viewer and dan said like how old it might be or you know maybe some something interesting happened inside this um building that you could tease because right now these are are just placeholder words almost we we would we would assume it's amazing because otherwise we're not going to click on it we 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 kind of are assuming that there's going to be something of interest because you've made a video about it. So tease a little bit more 
of the intrigue there. It, what, like, what is it? Is it is it like I said the word kitchen? Like, is it an old kitchen? Like, so you could just like bedroom. I don't know. Like, if, if it's a pile of stones, that pile of stones meant something to somebody one at one point. What was it? Like, tell me a little bit about it to to really get me interested to click on these videos. So, I think this is cool. They have access to something. Like, just getting back to like the positive things that are going on here, they have mm. access to something a lot of people don't have access to. Yeah, because of like specifically where you live or where you're willing to travel, whatever it might yeah. be, Fair and point. Yeah. like you're bringing people along for a ride, like an experience they wouldn't, they couldn't get for themselves or wouldn't normally. Like if it, like so many of us only have a few weeks a year for vacations, right? And if we can even afford to go on them, are you going to go to places like this or are you going to go to Disney World, right? So a lot of people will never in their lifetimes get to see stuff like this. So this is something you're doing that is really, really, really cool and unique, and I, I think there's definitely potential here. Do you think from a um, search discovery perspective, they should in, um, be more specific about the locations, like whether it's um, southern Croatia. I've seen Croatia there, but else everywhere else it's just uh, exploring a 19th century old stone hut. But they don't give the location of where. And I'm wondering if that historical aspect may enhance the discoverability of it or maybe hinder it. I mean, either way, these titles do need to be cleaned up quite a bit. And I'm just wondering, Dan, if you think location is something they should include. It's a similar when we talk about music the, the, in a, uh, on a music track. The genre of the music should probably include, be included in the title for a bit of search uh, richness. Yeah. I'm wondering if the same thing could be done here. Uh, yes, absolutely. I think like looking at the 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 Colosseum looking one is the probably the best thumbnail they have in my opinion, just because it's so cool looking. So I would have said like you you could put the name of the arena, but it like is there a more generic term you could use like yeah, uh, yeah. you know something like that? Like uh, you you have amph amazing amphitheater in Croatia is part of the thumbnail. You can barely read it; it's in the cloud there. Um, but that would have probably been a, a more catching title. And then, you know, you could have like you could have said like abandoned or ancient or something like that, ancient arena in Croatia. And yeah, that would tell me a lot about uh this without having to dissect that title for a really long time. And then just talking about sub niche really specifically, because you said the Colosseum one is the best thumbnail. I now will probably agree with you, and yet it has the least number of views. And I'm wondering if it's because they've gone from these very specific abandoned buildings to something more grand in scale. But the audience isn't interested in that. They can get that elsewhere on another channel. They're interested in these uh, old abandoned houses and buildings, these nondescript ones where maybe there's a new story to be told. Mm -hmm. Like sticking to that specific sub niche might be a strategy as well, because you look at the view counts, they're all in the hundreds or them. But once they, when they go some do something a little different, like a relaxing sound next to the beach or this Colosseum visit, the views go sub 100, which is also like an interesting insight into the channel. Yeah. I I wouldn't uh, give up necessarily on, on the, the, like the larger landmarks like that, but that is an interesting mm -hmm. call out. And yeah, when you went to the most popular videos, I noticed that the stone structures were even easier to see. Now, I don't think they can go in and like do landscaping around these things. They probably shouldn't disturb it. <laughs> But uh, it, it just so happens that these pictures, I think, stand out even more in some cases. And uh, yeah, it's just another thing to keep in mind. I think the, the photo you take of the structure is going to be everything. I would make sure to take it as a separate photo for sure and plan it out. And then, yeah, we, we can take any of these into some kind of photo editing tool to bring up all the different aspects of it, the, the contrast and the shadows, everything. All right, then, you may be hearing some music in the background because it is time for some super chats that are starting to stack up here on the vidIQ channel audit live stream. So we'll tackle some of them now. Every single week, we get new members who join the vidIQ nation, and it allows them to use our epic emojis, some of our custom emojis, of me saying yes and of jasper and uh, of of all sorts of wonderful things uh, that we have available 
for the emojis. Uh, Dan, do you think it's time? Do you know if we've got like access to more emojis yet? Like when the it, membership goes higher, we, I think we need to yeah, refresh need them a little to, bit as well. We need to add some more. I'll yeah. I'll look into it. I need to make that a personal project. Anyway, Military Insights has become a new member. So not only do they have access to those emojis, but they get a custom sound effect for one week and one week only. And this is yours. That's right. You just booted back up in Windows XP. Uh, Dan, the first mm. question that's come through today is... That's not a question. Broadmoor. And it's not a question. It's just thank you for all, of the, all, all you do. Wonderful content. That's pretty easy as a question. Dan, what's your answer? Thanks. All right. Next one comes from uh, Mommy Breakdown. They did it. Folks, they did it. <laughs> 1,000 subscribers. You deserve it. Congrats. Has, any, has anyone got any questions this week? Let's find out. Uh, Broadmoor. <laughs> Not sure how this works. They're back. Oh, wow. But I'm an editor for the channel Yeats Me Mario, a gaming channel of a Twitch streamer who does very difficult challenge runs, looking for just general advice. Hmm. So yeah, I've seen a lot of content like that. Uh, Re-edited Twitch content is uh, really popular. I think the the biggest thing, just like we were talking about today with, with some of these other channels so far, is that you need to pitch it in a way where anyone can understand what the challenge is. I know you're you're the editor, but if you're asking on behalf of uh, the channel, I think it's probably because probably, probably you're just looking for general YouTube advice. Um, the challenge should be interesting and like clear to the audience, but it also should be something that you know, maybe try to jump on trends for a bit. There's always some kind of new challenge out there that someone's doing, a new game they're playing. Try to jump on these trends. If Like, if I was the creator, I'd be like, just, hey, is there a new game that suddenly everyone's trying to, like, beat each other in? Jump in on that. Um, that's, it's difficult. Like, it's just competitive, right? Because doing a live stream, in my opinion, is a lot easier than planning out an entire video. And then you're taking it and making it into a video after the fact. So then you have to figure out how to pitch that after the fact. If you can go into those live streams planning, like this is going to be a video, what's the title going to be? What's my what's my challenge going to be for the day? Uh, that also helps so that you're doing a little more planning up front. Great answer, Dan. I don't think I can add any more to that. So we'll go on to the next one, which is Modern Homeschooling with Ali. Going to a conference and want to do a live stream walkthrough of a marketplace. Or do lives need to be more scripted and talking head style videos? Um, mm -hmm. I would say this sounds like the perfect thing to live stream because there's going to be a lot of spontaneity and just cool things happening and kind of exclusive access. You have exclusive access to something that, you know, may be of a cost or like there's travel restrictions. So to be able to, for people to be able to see it, uh, on your live stream would be cool. I guess just make sure that you have permission, uh, from the conference venue owners that you're allowed to do this live stream. And you've also got to consider this as well. Sometimes conferences and events can be really interesting and important to the people who go to them, but for the general audience, they might not care as much. So you have to think about if this conference is really big and well known, I can pitch it like that. And if it isn't, then you kind of need to pitch it along the lines of um, some really cool things that all homeschoolers might need in 2024. And it's actually a live stream of you going through these uh, stalls and the marketplace uh, at that conference. So that's or, just my my thought on the, maybe the pitch. Did you know there's a homeschooling convention? That, that could be like a way to pitch it too. Yeah, it, that could be another one as well. Yeah, good idea then. Uh, next one here uh, comes from Mischief Labs. We've got into a bit of mischief themselves. Uh-oh. Uh, oh. They've got a copyright strike today, uh, but they have written permission to use their song in their videos. You've disputed it. What repercussions should I expect? Well, first of all, we're not copyright mm. experts or anything. This is not legal advice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I would say that you're going through the process now to resolve it. Yeah. And if everything is above board and you do have permission, that copyright strike should be rescinded and you should have no problems whatsoever. I guess my only concern here is how did you get the written permission? Was it definitely from the copyright owner? Because it seems weird because a copyright strike rem 
um, requires a manual intervention. Yeah. So it's a, like a on the one hand, big. On the one hand, I'm going to give you the permission, but then on the other hand, then I'm going to uh, copyright strike you. Obviously, we don't have all of the st- information there, and please don't send us another super chat because like we can't go into any, into any more detail than that. But yeah, it's going to be it's going to be hopefully easily resolved. If it isn't, then there's documentation to say what happens with a copyright strike. If you get three channels terminated, and I'm trying to remember what happens with one copyright strike. Do you, it, it eventually you, falls off? I think after 90 days. After 90 something? days, but are you restricted from doing live streams or something? I can't. I don't remember. think it's so. I don't think so. It, it's just yeah. It's just you're at risk now. I would avoid using music from anywhere that isn't like a well-known source at this point, just to keep yourself more safe. Like an epidemic sound, for example. Um, we have a link down below for them. It's way, way less headache to just use Mm. music that is more protected and like more validated. If in case like you used from, I don't want to call anyone out, but there are certain channels that say, Hey, you can use this music in videos and this, this counts as written permission, but they don't even have permission to sample the music that they're using to make their music. So it's a mess. The copyright system is already a mess. And I think you're playing with fire by using things that, you know, are going to get picked up by the, the YouTube bots and the people who are abusing the system and all that stuff. Next question. A day of the Dennis. One big video, one uh, short a week. Oh, sorry, one big video a oh. month, I think. Okay. And one short a week. Is this good? Is it good for you? That's really the question. <laughs> it's, 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 it is like we kind of throw the question back at the creator, but yeah. Yeah. It, I've seen plenty of channels very successful uploading once a month. Um, and it's a big video, like you said. So yeah, uh, don't, don't start burning yourself out because you know, th- th- those guys at vidIQ said, well, you should be making more, more videos is more videos. Sure. But we know what happens when you make too many videos and you're not putting in the time and effort you used to be because you're now over encumbered. So yeah, I I'd say one short a week is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, it's again it's kind of at your own pace it's up to you uh more shots of the target is more shots of the target but at the end of the day if it's going to affect your quality you're not going to probably enjoy the same success you know what i mean so does the uh data validate your decision to only make one video a month like if it's got really high watch time high click-through rate positive signals are being sent to youtube what that basically means is your audience likes what you made they will wait for the next thing that comes out from you because if it is a big video and nobody else can replicate it, then you have this unique position on YouTube. But if you're finding that you're putting all of this effort into uh, the quality of a video and the audience doesn't care, then maybe you do need to go at a higher cadence, uh, but less um, quality and test different things to see what does resonate uh, with your audience. Uh, so, yeah, did that help? I don't know if it did, but uh, that's something to think about. Now, uh, we're going to answer just a couple more Super Chats here, but let me just put something on screen, because what we've been doing here is effectively uh, answering your questions in a very similar style to what a one-on-one YouTube coach might do. Mm. Uh, the difference with a one-on-one coach is that they would be able to ask very bespoke tailored questions about their channel to the coach through video messaging and that coach would be able to um converse collaborate improve and perfect your next video as well as your long-term youtube goals and journey and that's basically what dan if you just point up at it now that's basically what this thing will do if you scan it or if you look at the description uh, of the vidIQ uh, live stream right now, and you'll find information on our one-on-one coaching, where you will have the benefit and access to a experienced YouTube coach who will help guide you on your journey. Very similar, but just a hundred times better than what we're doing now. Because right now we're answering questions for the community, whereas with one-on-one coaching, it's all about you, the individual creator. So check it out if you're interested. Uh, and uh, we'll continue to answer some of your super chats. I'll leave that QR code up there if you do want to scan it. Uh, and it's kind of weird. Like if you're watching on a mobile, then you'll need to borrow somebody else's phone to scan it and then send that link back to you. Or you can just use a link in the description. It's entirely up to you. Right, Dan, the next question. Tattoos in review. 
Will a weekly underperforming live stream impact the overall performance of your channel? Nah. What is a, a weekly underperforming live stream? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the views on these yeah. compared to our videos, you could argue that these are underperforming. But they're these, very... yeah. These live streams cap out at 15,000 views a week. Yeah. And like if one of our videos got that in its first 24 hours, we'd be pretty disappointed. Yeah. And yeah, I've been doing this for six years every single week i think it's the same as shorts like different audience different expectations there are certainly things you could do to have a live stream live on after the fact uh having it be just rewatchable because you know the way you title it thumbnailed it and you've respected mm -hmm. the fact that people might watch it after the fact welcome in your your when you start your live stream welcome in the folks who are there live and then just give a quick shout out to everyone who's watching after the fact like make them feel like hey i made this for you as well but those things can help a live stream kind of get views after the fact, but I would not worry about it impacting your overall performance. Uh, we've seen channels that are about one thing and do live streams about totally different things and everything seems to be fine. It's like the live streams are for them to kind of screw around and do their fun stuff. And the videos are still them having fun, but they're way more structured and, and planned out. All right, you got two more minutes to scan that QR code and then it's disappearing. But in the meantime, Explore the New, uh, saying thank you, they have very specifically 1,399 subscribers and good watch time. So hopefully you're on your way to monetization. If you're not, if you already got there and Alex Dombey, we ride too. So many creators use a random video as a channel trailer. Do you suggest it be a video explaining what your channel is mm. about? Does it really help? This is going to be an interesting question. It's a great question for the entire community because yeah. I guarantee you, I will have a different answer to most other people, although it might be the same as Dan's, but what, what would you say for a channel trailer, Dan? Um, I, the advice I've heard and I've followed myself is to put your best foot forward, meaning take one of your best videos that is not only something you're proud of, but something that's a good representation of your channel, where it's currently at, and make that your trailer. Trade it out once in a while if things start to kind of change, maybe your qu well, quality gets a bit better. But that that's good because if people are going to your channel page, they're probably trying to get a good sense of like, well, who is this person? And so that's what I like to do. Um, and Rob, I feel like that's what we're doing currently on the VidIQ channel. Yeah, so what we've basically done in the past is we take whichever video converts the most subscribers and use that as our channel trailer because we feel as if it best represents a person watching one of our videos saying, ah, this video, this channel's made for me, I'm going to subscribe. Uh, what I would say is if you're expert storyteller and you can really talk about your journey and how it relates to your audience and that is your like superpower your master skill then maybe it is worth doing a dedicated channel trailer but i i'll just be honest i don't think most people are capable of making that trailer video um we tried it in the past and it hasn't worked so that's why we just go for a guaranteed slam dunk video as yeah. a trailer all right, you know what I'm going to do now? I'm huh? going to remove oh. that QR code. Maybe it'll return later, and you'll be able to scan it then. Uh, okay. We'll just have to see. In the meantime... If we're good. If, if you're all good, if you're all good. In okay. the meantime, we're going to audit a, another channel now, and this comes from an alternative submission method. This oh. comes from Discord. You know, Dan, we've got a Discord community, right? I, I was going to say, if you're looking for some new emotes, if you're a member, go to our Discord and uh, somewhere in there, maybe, maybe, like just to give us some suggestions, because I'm gonna I'm gonna need some if we're gonna order some new emotes. Uh, but there's all kinds of stuff, thumbnail uh, reviews there, people sharing their achievements. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in our community Discord. Vidiq.com/discord if you want to join, get some 24/7 YouTube advice from creators just like you. And Vicky, our amazing uh, community manager there in Discord, ran a competition recently about the best hooks uh, from creators in Discord. And we have a winner from uh, those submissions. And they go by the name of Danny De Silves. Hmm. I apologize if I pronounce your name wrong and any channel's name wrong. I should, I, I should always ask, add that as one of the housekeeping bits. We're bound to pronounce the names wrong. Hopefully I've got it right. This channel has just cracked 1,000 subscribers, first of all. Nice. Congratulations on that. And their channel banner is fairly straightforward. Get unstuck, unstuck and start healing. So, Dan, I'll throw it to you uh, for some uh, general observations about uh, where we think the channel's at at the moment. So, yeah, it looks like a 
channel that's kind of promoting, I'd say, mental health. Mm hmm. Yeah, go along um, with that. Now, the no video I'm noticing right away is the quick guide to uh, CPTSD. Uh, there, that has almost a thousand views. And it's like a very specific video. And I guess that was what I was going to get at with, with some of the other content I'm seeing here is that the specificity is sometimes not really there, you know? Um, like the silent relationship killer, low self-esteem. But it, that it, surely has a, I guess, a more understandable, broader target audience, it, right? Yes, Just yeah, it's counter, very... It is. It, it's very broad. It's not like a bad title. It's just... Um, if people, like... I, I'm trying to think if I was in the position, would I need to be convinced that it's low self-esteem? And maybe... Right, so it's it's. I'm kind of thinking of it from the perspective of this kills relationships nine times out of ten, you know, something like that. Uh, anyway, mm, I'm I'm okay. getting off track. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. The, that that video is a guide, is what I was going to say. Though the the CPTSD, it, that's like more of a guide on a specific thing, and it's getting more views in the sense that people are like, oh, I, the, you know, I this is a thing that I am curious about learning more about, so they're searching for it. But yeah, that's that was just something that jumped out at me. I don't think these are bad titles or anything. I'm just I'm trying to think of more bits of advice I can give. Let, let me ask you this question. Yeah, uh, there was a, a noticeable uh, tweak in the thumbnail design, and I think both styles of thumbnails are of a competent level. Uh, and I'm going to ask the people in the chat here as well, uh, so we can get like a broad canvas here. Which thumbnails do you think are better? These ones where it's kind of like a a stylish, colorful background, but it's not too uh, dominating and some text or them with like a, a a studio background or a wall background with uh, maybe a little bit more text. Because I, 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 I'm not sure on the answer here. I don't know which one I yeah. prefer more, but there is, there's been an, a noticeable um, attempt by this creator to, to shift how their thumbnails look. I, I, I mean, think... V is too complicated, obviously. Yeah. But the, the simplicity here is, I it, think, good. The ones in the middle there are standing out more thanks to, like, the, the blue backgrounds and stuff. Like, the mm. host is standing out more. And the later ones, they're not standing out as much. And I think that could just be, again, cut yourself off the background and just, like, brighten up the, the colors and everything. And that, that could help a lot. But, yeah, I think the latest thumbnail especially it just feels flat. Just, just uh, needs to be brought up in photoshop or something and then another question i may ask to the creator is that i think dan you're right that this is about uh, mental health i think in particular relationships um but i think it covers all sorts of different styles of relationships one about a boss one about narcissism mm. and there are channels dedicated to this one topic of narcissism that we've covered True. in the past and then as you say something a little bit more perhaps academic or in detail is CPTSD. Like, I don't know what that is off uh, without probably watching the video. Again, the, the question is, I don't know if there's a right answer here. Do you think the, the channel is maybe trying to cover too many relationship topics and it's not speaking to a particular individual who has, <coughs> excuse me, these mental relation, mental wellness and relationship challenges? Yeah, that, now that you mention it, like I'm trying to think of the the specific audience. Like, let's say you're you're dealing with a toxic boss, like it says in that one thumbnail and title. Yeah. That is going to apply maybe more specifically to people who are struggling in their careers. And then there was the you know the other one about how um, what was it like low self esteem could be killing your relationship. That sounds like more of a romantic relationship, um, or maybe friends, you know, relationship with friends and things like that. So like. It's two different sets of people, even though the same advice would apply. Mm. The, the tragic part about YouTube sometimes is that you have to like focus a little bit more on on that specific audience. And so you could if if you know a lot of like mental health tricks to help people like, you know, do better with their jobs and, and, and level up their careers and things like that and deal with toxicity in the workplace, whatever it might be, you might find that you have like a really wide audience there. Right. But if you're if you're jumping from like these different points of interest like and different struggles i don't know you maybe that's slowing you down a little bit i'm saying maybe because if you have a job it's probably not too weird to think you might also be in a romantic relationship with somebody sure. right so yeah. it's it's 
it's difficult to like say, oh, this person's not focusing enough because I'm re- I respect that like again, the same advice could apply to multiple situations and you know, people are multifaceted. So I don't want to push too hard in that direction, but you could, you know, you could just try going down that road for a little bit and seeing what happens. Views are fairly consistent throughout. I'd say the the low end is 250 views. The high end is maybe 550 views, sometimes 600 views. And that's kind of across all of all of the videos. So there is a clearly a core audience of its return to the content. Now, this, Dan, is one of the channels where I actually want to watch one of the videos. Uh, so okay. I'm going to play about the first 45 seconds of this one about low self-esteem. So I'll, if it's halfway through, I'll rewind it, and then we'll just watch it together. Did you know that your low self-esteem can push people away? If you are healing your trauma wounds right now, but you are starting from a place of not valuing yourself and holding a negative mindset, it actually makes the healing process harder and much more painful. And people can sense when you hold negative thoughts and they will try to distance themselves from you, meaning you end up trying to heal with no support circle. I'm Danny De Silvez, a DBT therapist in training, helping you to get unstuck and start healing. So let's look at the 11 signs of low self-esteem so you can begin to identify what parts of you need to be healed so you can get through your healing journey without adding any extra pain. Oh, I'll pause it right there. Well, yeah. well, hang on. And sign seven is an eye opener that you won't. Be- I wanted to leave out because we talk about sign seven. Um, you know, if we talk about just going back to packaging a little bit, 11 signs of your low self-esteem, I'm wondering if instead of just kind of repeating the thumbnail and title, they could have had one of the signs as a tease, yeah. which might have been yeah. um, sign seven. Anyway, sorry, I, I just that just popped into my head as we were watching the intro. What do you think, Dan? Uh, well, uh, first of all, the, the tool we have there on the right is showing us that we're getting more views than average now, which is really positive. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the production quality in terms of like the, the camera, the lighting, all that stuff looks awesome. Yeah, I, I got a comment on the way it's being edited. Okay, it, right. It almost feels like they used AI to do some of the work for them because the the zooms are so unnatural and jarring and constant and unnecessary yeah. and I'm begging you to please never do it again because <laughs> it was just like you know, it's like you're taking the audience and just shaking them slowly. <laughs> and I don't understand why you're doing that. Uh that that's my only critique. I like everything else uh, about it. It's just that was like why are we zooming in uh, and zooming in and zooming out over and over? Something I noticed as well was that they use the same mouse click whenever these texts appear on, on screen. And I think maybe after two or three minutes, that same sound over and over again might start to get a little um, grating. And I may be giving you some frontier gibberish here, but I felt that this was almost too polished. And what I mean by that mm. is I felt that it was very well presented, but it kind of made me feel as if this person was reading off a, an auto cue or like a, reading a script. And, you know, I think in many circumstances that would probably be fine and cool, but it, it leaves me with a sense of um, a bit of detachment from the, from the creator. Mm. I don't know if I'm maybe uh, getting an insight into their natural personality maybe i'm wrong with that and maybe you know I'm, I'm more sensitive to this because this person is talking about relationships and i feel as if that's kind of you know we talk about photography channels where the thumbnail is really important maybe in relationship advice th- the way you um connect with the um the host the hero is really important but i don't know I, just from that first minute that's i kind of I don't want to say I didn't like to present. I kind of got a bit of a cold vibe. I don't know. Maybe I'm bit, being a bit too critical there, but I don't know, Dan. Help me out here. Just slap me in the face if you think I'm completely wrong there, or that could be agreed with. A quick shout out to Nick Ninnan, who's uh, oh, also coming on the hey, editing. Hey, Nick. How are you hey, doing? Um, He's on the, the road to a million subscribers. And of course, I am not Nick Ninnan, despite my appearance. <laughs> uh, so I... I would agree with you, and I'm mostly going to speak just from my own experience. I do use a teleprompter sometimes. I have it right here, and I go off script a lot, but the teleprompter kind of helps me just stay on track, 
and going off script helps me sound more natural, I think. And this is still a practice that I'm I'm trying to get better at. I agree in the sense that yeah, it it does sound it like if you just kind of close your eyes, it sounds like someone reading an audiobook a little bit. And that's not I'm not trying to be insulting. I don't think that's like a I don't think it's bad. It just it does have that disconnect, especially when you're looking at the creator. It it does feel very professional in a corporate kind of way. Mm, and yeah. That's a good way of putting it. Maybe a bit too corporate. A yeah. little bit. I don't want to throw too many barbs. I just think that no, this is like, no. it, if they agree, I think this is something you could get better at over time. It's like, a, it's like a good problem to have because it's almost like you're, you're too perfect. You're too smooth. So you just need to rough, rough the edges a little bit of uh, uh, the way we're presenting. But yeah, Dan, as we continue through that constant slow pan in and pan out, it's now driving me absolutely nuts. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I really do like what's going on with this channel, and I think that's oh, one of the reasons we're I agree. sticking to I it. Agree. Like, it's it's a struggle. This it struggled to like, kind of like, you know, earlier I was coming on just one specific video title, and I think when you have a channel that's doing what this channel's doing, it's when it's difficult for us, like something's going, uh, you know, really right here. It's just we're like, oh, maybe that specific title could have been a little bit different. Maybe this thumbnail could have been a little bit different. Like we're cherry picking things because they're on the right track. Like they're using their professional expertise to, you know, benefit a wider audience, which is excellent. It's so good. I'm, I'm really encouraged by this channel. My final idea before we move on is, um, is there potentially some trend jacking you can do here in terms of attaching these relationship discussions to people who might be in the news for any of these things happening? Uh, that's always a way to try and reach a broader target audience. Um, for example, think Emily D. Baker. She's like always talking about, she's using her uh, legal knowledge and just plugging it into what's happening uh, in the legal world right now. And I'm wondering if that's something you could probably do uh, with this content as well, uh, with celebrities or people who are in the news that are maybe affected, impacted, or are one of these um, traits that you're describing and include it in the packaging. Maybe it's in the content, but we're not getting that far into to the videos. Yeah. That is Danny De Silves uh, with the last uh, pre-picked channel that we're auditing. So now what we need to do is press the following button that will take us to. So we are going completely random at this point. We have on the form 473 submissions. So we take that number, we put it into this machine. And because I am posting, Claudia is mm. having the week off. We do oh. not have to listen to her miserable oh. attitude. Probably good. And <laughs> agonizing wait to pick numbers, because I'll just do it like that. I pick a number, I take that number. It doesn't feel I very random. Into the, into the machine. It's right at the top of the, three, one. the latest people who've submitted. Felt, felt fairly random to me. And then we take this channel. Hopefully that URL is going to work. We're and... not going to get anyone under channel 400. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. And uh, this channel, uh, we haven't come across it before. First impressions. So get ready for this. I mean, that's the start of a song, isn't it? We are looking at... Omtivational. That's how I'm going to pronounce that channel. And Dan, you know, just looking at the first few thumbnails on the channel banner, is okay. this a Kung Fu, Kung Fu Panda appreciation I don't, channel? I don't know. It's There's not, but the last three videos were. Here. Yeah. Half a million views. Goodness. Right. Okay, so let's address some uh, things here. The, uh, the Some of the thumbnails definitely look AI generated. Yeah, can we look at the kinda, engagement on the half a million view one? We you kind of have that smoothness yeah. on the images. Uh, so yeah, we're going to look at the, um, the engagement here, uh, which is 24,000 likes. YouTube kids, okay. Okay, right. I'm going to so play this with no sound, just right. first of all. 
avoid it. We have to do something. We can't just let him march on the valley and take his revenge. He'll... I'm going to stop it there because so, it feels like at the moment they're just yeah. taking a clip and maybe putting some captions on it. So this video ended up in the YouTube Kids app, and I guess it makes sense because they've taken a family movie and just yeah. put some captions on it, and that's about it. It looks like it. I'm letting it play to see if there's sort of any intervention, and I'm not seeing they They've anything. cut together this character's like journey of self-discovery, I think. So it's, yeah. it, it's an edit, as they say. Um, a, a, a montage, perhaps. Yeah. I look at this content and I, I don't see enough transformation. Yeah. One tablespoon, teaspoon of generosity. One. So I guess what we can say is that in the short term, this channel may have some success with this um, concept of taking and compent martyr. I can't say that word. What are you trying I'm to say? I'm going to try it one more time. Okay. Compartmentalized stories oh. from the characters and, and then editing them together to have this story of interest. However, long term, what are the goals of a channel? Yeah. Because if you're thinking about building a community, monetizing the channel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I worry that that's going to be a step too far in the sense of YouTube's um, reuse and repetitious guidelines, community guidelines, that type of thing. Yeah. I think the, the, the advice here for me is simple. Um, keep doing what you're doing. If you're happy to never have this content monetized in any way, you're just enjoying editing stuff together. Um, I'd say the the one critique is that the red text in your thumbnails is impossible to read because the fonts are very weird. Other than that, um, taking work that you didn't make and doing very minor edits to it to try and piece a different story together. A lot of people are doing that super low barrier to entry. And like Rob said, YouTube will likely like if you get the numbers to apply for monetization, YouTube will likely deny you that monetization. Um, we're not we we don't work for YouTube. Maybe I'm wrong, but. Uh, it, it's a risk, huge, huge risk doing this kind of content if your goal is to eventually like monetize and yeah, like Rob said, build a community as well. Yeah, these um, these uh, videos to us as you know, experienced YouTube educators and viewers on the platform, it kind of tickles our funny bun or like it ruffles up against our sense of the spirit of the original creator and so there may be challenges ahead having said that they're well put together for mm -hmm. what they are like the packaging's kind of hitting its mark and the editing's on point but there's a a creator goal question that we need to answer uh, going forward in the meantime a wild travis has entered the arena hey hey, hey. how's it going travis uh, I'm, I haven't been awake for a full 15 minutes yet. So if, <laughs> if my advice goes sideways, uh, I apologize in advance. The first thing you thought to do on a Tuesday morning was to join a, a, a channel audit live stream in front of 700 people plus. Well, so I woke up thinking that I'd already missed it. So I'm like, eh, I'm ah. sit down. And then I see the thing. I'm like, Oh, well, let me, let me put my pants on. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't. They're still off. Okay. All right. But, um, I just Good to know. Away. Good yeah. to know. Uh, yeah. that, that's that's horrifying. No, God, please, no, <laughs> no, no. Right, we're going to audit a gaming channel now, and so we have to do a fresh count. Three, seven, three. That's going to be 300 and something. And Dan thinks this is all rigged. Let's find out. He oh. is wrong. 100% wrong. Dan, you are wrong. <laughs> So we take the gaming channel, which is one, what was it? 164, I think. And we are going to look at Brave Play Gaming, who I think describe themselves as a, as a horror channel. Okay. And I don't know whether we want to throw this over to our sleepy co-host or not. Sure, but I don't care. I mean, you there know. There you go. YOLO. <laughs> sure, whatever. <laughs> YOLO. They didn't pay anything for this. All right. 
Um, let's see. <laughs> uh, Brave Play Gaming. All right. So gaming channel, as we talked about before, we got a little bit of the uh, the memes, as I heard someone say on TV once. <laughs> <laughs> they did it for the memes. Um, I always like the. Uh, okay, so here. Okay, here's a question. So this is a gaming channel, but we have like jump scares. Is Children of the Woods a game? Is that an actual game, or is that something oh, else? When, I when guess. Here? Looks like it's, it from the the preview. Back. Wow, that's a crazy looking game. Okay, I, now see what I do like is that they did the Children of the Woods, but there are no children, so they're doing the kind of opposite things. I, I love that. Um, crazy moments. It really feels like this channel doesn't quite have um, a direction yet. Like they haven't quite figured it out, and um, that's okay, especially if you're newer. I don't know how new this channel is, but. Um, I want you to look at every every video you put out as a potential viral moment. And I say that, when I say that, I mean for everyone who's watching, it doesn't matter if you're a gaming channel or not, what I'm about to tell you is how YouTube works, if you don't know. It's going to be very important that you listen to this, because after this, you don't have to hear anything else we say. When you put out a video, if that video blows up, you have to know that if you're going to continue to grow, you're going to have to do that style of video about that type of topic and that type of niche forever i mean not forever but generally forever to grow if you put out a video about something you don't want to do or you're not really invested in and it blows up and i this is the unfortunate reality of the situation youtube will tell you different but i've helped thousands of creators and i can tell you this is how it is it will ruin your channel if you have a gaming channel and you do something about baking bread and that bread video but you have a breaking bread channel congratulations you should call it breaking bread they kind of like Breaking Bad. That'd be great. You have the best. See, this is what happens when I haven't woken up yet. <laughs> um, so in the situation like this, you're so kind of all, they seem like horror related. So that's kind of the niche I'm getting from it, which is fine. But if there's one of these that you're like, I just threw it out there just to try it. And it took off. You're, you're going to not feel good about it being a channel about, uh, I don't know, the quest for exit eight, for example. Dan, other than um, suggesting this channel bakes bread, uh, mm. what do you think? I I would have to agree. Like when I see channels that cover like horror games, they typically like they do stick to one for a bit. I don't know if that's what they need to do. Uh, they are playing like uh, Lethal Company, which is you know I'd say it's a trend. I think it's dying down a little bit. Mm. Um. Lethal Company shows up a few times, but then there's some other games I've just never heard of before. Some work better than others. Yeah, that one, The Quest for Exit 8, a trolling adventure through mysterious something. That one did pretty well. And I, I kind of wonder, could there have been more opportunities to play that? I'm not sure. But yeah, I think three months, three months, three months. Yeah, there's also like not a ton of videos being uploaded. I noticed that, yeah. 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 There's so a consistency. many... Yeah, there's so many things we could say. Be a little more consistent with your uploads. Maybe try being consistent with the style of uh, game for a while. Because um, maybe something's trending and you're jumping away from it too quickly. But that I just yeah. want to check if we're oh. a long or short channel. Just making sure. Yeah, they, oh, they, got they it. describe okay. themselves as a long channel, a long form content channel. Could, could we click on the video to see if they have a face cam up? You know, all that stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll do this. I think this is their most popular video with nearly 700 views. And Previous thumbnails did have a um, okay. game, uh, the hero on screen with what I think are yeah, decent thumbnails for a horror channel, given that most horror channels struggle with lighting. These are certainly bright enough to see. Anyway, let's watch the first 13 seconds, 15 seconds in this one. That was kill. Oh, shit. Whoa. Uh -huh. Sorry, sorry. The, not watching a horror game at double speed is just not going to be. I thought that was that. Okay. okay. The arrow. The arrow. Mm, I thought that was the tail. Bullshit! Oh, Leave me alone. Let's come after you. Yeah. That was too long, wasn't it? It is. That it needed needs, to be three or four seconds. It needs a face cam. I, I think this is like, I don't know. I don't want to put all horror videos into one bucket like this, but it seems like there's some personality <laughs> here. <laughs> I, you're running away from this monster and you're trying to get us hyped up for this like terrifying experience you're about to have. I think that could have been like way shorter 
And when that when you saw that thing for the first time, you zoom in on your eyes just getting big and you're the character's running away and it cuts back to you like freaking out. Like that's the kind of stuff that's going to get us hyped up for stuff like this, because that's why people watch these types of videos, in my opinion, is because they like seeing somebody just get caught completely off guard. You know, like that's why I think this genre is popular. Maybe that's a hot take. That's just how I see it. So that is one piece of advice I have. I think they should be on camera. Let's pick another channel and we'll go back to the non-gaming form, which now has 504 submissions. Dan, what number do you think this is going to be? Check if it's rigged. It's going to be in the 400. Okay. <laughs> Dan is useless at this game. <laughs> I think you should all in the chat every time we pick something from a claw, yeah. predict not one predict what number it would be. Yeah. Because that would be awesome for our engagement. <laughs> yeah, you should also leave comments if you're watching this after the fact. <laughs> Next channel we are looking at is Loic. I'm gonna describe the channel as. And I am getting a video review vibe. Has anyone watched Civil War, by the way? The new mm -hmm. film that came out? Mm -hmm. I'd like to. It is just silly. I don't know if anybody else has watched it, but following two photojournalists around an American, a modern American Civil War with like access everywhere, it sounds a bit silly and it is. That's my like two second review. Anyway. I actually don't even know what the yeah. movie's about, other than what you just now said. I just heard the name. Someone agree or disagree with me in the chat, and I'll bring it up on screen. I feel like we should do Rob Wilson needs a new channel, YouTube channel where he just summarizes videos in two seconds like he just did there. I bet you'd be a million <laughs> subscriber channel in like three months. Okie dokie. Heard it here first from sleep from Sleepy Travis. I'm telling you. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, this channel with its 300 subscribers and movie reviews where we often look at movie review channels that really struggle with views, like not getting over a hundred most occasions because they're jumping from genre to genre and new movies. And like, we're not really focusing on a, like a passionate community around one franchise. They're booking a trend and getting thousands of views on some of these videos, which is pretty good, right? Yeah. I mean, some of them are timely. If you look at the time, like Dune 2 just came out right around the same time that that video went up. So that's not surprising. Um, the next John Wick. I don't uh, know. What, well, oh, hang on. I would I would counsel just say that um, Travis and say yeah, but hundreds of thousands of channels probably bring out a review on June two, and they don't get two yeah. two and a half thousand views with three hundred subscribers. There must well, be something the more thing. than just timeliness. Yeah. Well, I mean, we we can only see what we can see from here. What I'm saying sure. is, is that a lot of these are some people will put out the video like this a year from now, and it almost has no chance of growing. Is my point. So there is a time when when you're doing stuff like this where the the soil is rich. Right. And Ooh, if you like have good, yeah. if you have good seeds, they're going to grow. Now, the assumption here is at least the videos are probably pretty decent is what I think we're going to find. Um, again, yeah, you're right. Sometimes people put out stuff, but then they have like, you know, it's all counter strike after you click the thumbnail. And of course, that's not going to do well. But my point <laughs> is, these videos are probably only going to do well if they're timely. Short of this, this fast X, which is interesting. Well, that's 10 months ago. I guess that was when did Fast X come out? Was that I think it was probably around that time in the summer of last year, at a guess. So, so my guess is like that these are probably pretty decent videos. I mean, we can check 30 seconds, and I think we're going to find that they're pretty decent, at least the, the ones with good views. And the timeliness has helped themselves. Now, I guess the question is, this will almost become a movie trailer channel, but I think that these say reviews, right? But they're, mm. they're not about mm. the same type, like style of if i want to subscribe to a channel like this i would want to come here for like all action movies or all sitcom um you know or yeah whatever that's what you usually expect isn't it yeah dan uh just any general thoughts for you and then as travis suggests let's watch one of these videos for 20 seconds or so i think one thing that's working for them is i'm just looking at the grand turismo one the problem with grand turismo being a true story it, so it, they're reviewing a movie but they're talking about a specific part like point yeah. And not just saying Gran Turismo review, which I think is a, a separator with this channel compared to other channels we've seen do movie reviews and, and they're kind of new to the, the game. Yeah. Do you have a preference on which video we should watch? I think we should watch the um, the truth on why uh, Fast X is terrible. I think that's, right. that sounds interesting. Let's do it. Is Fast X bad on purpose? 
Kind of. It's a little <laughs> bit complicated. Over the last 10 years, every single Fast and Furious movie has been getting worse and worse. We're at a point now where the franchise doesn't take itself seriously anymore. But just because the franchise is now self-aware doesn't make it good. It's pretty fun. I'll stop it okay. there. I think just yeah, the yeah. script has drawn me in. That the, yeah. the, yeah. the narration <clears throat> and the presenting is like... I, I love the, the their voice and yep. kind of like that, the pause that the, uh, in the intro, like I'm invested. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, this is this is why I said I'm not surprised that the video is actually listening to Craig's pretty good because yeah. you get an opportunity when the soil is 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 whatever I said it was. Um, Rich. Rich, I'm still tired. Uh, <laughs> but if it's good, it'll stick, and that's what happens. Like this guy actually has the ability to tell a story, and I was the first like six seconds, I was like, "Yep, this is going to be good." Like I could tell mm -hmm. right away. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like what's going to happen is is at some point he's going to hit something that's like if he had i'd guarantee like if he had done like other big things like with wrestlemania why was wrestlemania good this year so like if he gets the really big things that are happening and covers them he's gonna blow up 100 percent. but the problem is look at how often he uploads he'll do these like these spurts and then they'll take a couple months off yeah um yeah, this jump, channel will do well if it, if he can be consistent and continue to find the big thing so when the next uh disney what in may 4th the new star wars uh thing comes out on disney plus that's going to be the, the amount of viewership on youtube about that is going to be huge if he jumps on that 100 percent, he's going to grow but then you're going to be more into the sci-fi stuff so be really cognizant of the viewership you're bringing in because that's the viewership that will continue to come to your channel I'll leave the final thoughts to you dan i no, I think we've covered it. I think there's you, a lot you have of none. Uh, <laughs> All right. I have none. Yeah. I think no there's a lot of potential for that channel. Channel gaming looking 393. So place your bets, folks. Place your bets. What number do you think we're going to get? Dan, what number do you think we're going to get? 280 <clears throat> something. 280 something. <laughs> now that makes you think you might be. <laughs> <laughs> this person is not even here. Very well, may not be alive anymore. Uh, we may have already. Uh, I don't think we have. Uh, we haven't audited this channel. I'll tell you why I didn't. You skip this, this channel. I'll tell you why. Okay. Because it was another Minecraft tutorial one, and we've audited so many Minecraft channels that I wanted to audit something a little bit different. But they've got picked anyway. But I they mean, got that, anyway. what are the chances? The random jump number generator is pick the first channel, but like immediately I go to the channel and I think these are nice thumbnails. We I I've say no to these. I've seen the sugar cane video. I think we've audited this channel, haven't we? Yeah. Or I mean, are people making the same exact tutorials? And so I know I think they had two farming videos farm. and then infinite rails afterwards. I think we've done this. I, yeah, channel. we. Okay, so they we're saying that if this is a channel we've looked at before and they've kept up with what they were doing, probably following some of our advice. The thumbnails are nice and clear and readable. Um, posting about once a week. I mean, maybe a couple times a week. This is this is overall of a high quality. Are you making things that people in Minecraft want to make? Uh, these could all live on for a long time. Like if, if the tutorials are are good and timeless, they could they could get views for a very very long time. So maybe. But uh, yeah, I, that's it, it's going to be like an output game. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm saying Dan is struggling to add anything. I am to because we, did, we spoke, uh, spoke about. We've before. talked either to this specific channel before or a channel just like it. And I, so I, I I agree. I think as you say, we probably picked out this one as like the the outlier, building like a something that's useful. A, a rail to the, duplicator, yeah, like that's that sounds pretty version. awesome. They've, they've tried to replicate it with a TNT duplicator in Minecraft. And, you know, 100 views, I think that's still pretty decent for the channel. Um, I guess my only question would be, it looks as if they have a cadence of once a week, maybe two video, three videos every two weeks, given the length of videos that are usually a minute long. Can yeah. they do more or does it take a long time to build these things? I don't know. You've you got to wait for an output from the things that you build. Yeah. Um, can we look at their form submission one more time? I just want to check something real quick. I'm going to investigate something. Uh, uh, okay. They said no. We've yeah, not I looked think, at the channel I, before. I think they have. I, I think they it, have. We, well, it's interesting. We get people who say no a lot. And what's, yeah. what <laughs> is a struggle here is that a lot of people don't even realize we've looked at their channel. So I just wanted to point out that our community manager, Victoria, 
when these streams end, maybe it takes a couple days sometimes, we put all the channels we reviewed in the description. Like there's a we form do. or there's a spreadsheet. Like check and make sure your channel hasn't already been audited before you say, oh, I've never been audited before. There's a lot of people saying I've entered like a hundred times. You might've actually been picked at some point. So mm -hmm. just uh, check our streams and, and see. All right, I think we need a change of uh, speed here. And the way we're gonna do that is by playing some music. And oh, oh. my goodness, it's appeared once again. The QR code, and it's now invading Dan's studio. Uh, so you better scan it quick before it disappears. I don't like but in it. the meantime, we're going to tackle the rest of the Super Chats that came in. And of course, I did save this one uh, for the start of this session of Super Chats. Because basically, oh. it's just it's just a, a loving message. Jay's Horror Gaming, listen to these guys. Never had an audit but just broke 1,000 subscribers because they're their amazing advice. Keep up your YouTube journey and the greatest will come. That's a wonderful message uh, to us and to all of the uh, community as well. Uh, thank you, Jay. Uh, the next Super Chat is another new member of a VidIQ Nation beyond the tape, and they get this uh, unique sound effect for the week. Mm. Uh, mine Minecraft. I'm a Spanish national doing Minecraft videos in English. Should I do it as well as for the Spanish speaking countries on the same channel? Maybe not the same channel. Yeah. We would always uh, encourage people to split up languages. For example, we have an English vidIQ channel, but also a Spanish speaking uh, vidIQ channel as well, where Dan and myself actually sound we, better. Well, I don't know about Dan, we, but we have to do this live stream again right after this in <laughs> Spanish. So, uh, if, if only, if only. Uh, but yeah, the, the problem is you have a video that does well for your English speaking audience, and then the next video that's served up to them is Spanish speaking. You completely alienated that audience, so you want to keep that audience separate. There are tools that are potentially coming to YouTube this year, which may kind of auto dub into different languages, but that remains to be seen. But for now, probably different language, different YouTube channel. Yeah. Is the music playing? I can't hear it. It is. It's just quiet. Really? All right. It's just yeah, very, it's quiet. very quiet. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to bring up the music a tiny bit because I like it when I can hear it in the background. <laughs> uh, next question. Lock props. I had a drop off in watch time per day, 20 hours down to three to five hours per day. Should I be worried? Yes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought you were going to dive in on something there. Like, oh, where's this going? Travis's answer is a definitive yes. Well, I mean, listen, it could be. Here's the thing. Only people I've ever seen use themselves as like a quote is you and Viper. Like, Viper <laughs> will use a sound bite of himself. I was like, why don't you just say it? Sorry, wrong, wrong sound effect. Yes. <laughs> it's like, it's you. You can literally do it. It would make sense if I had that sound effect because I can't make that sound. But you, anyway, uh, what this is possibly indicative of is a couple things. Number one, it could be that your, your channel has something seasonal and people just aren't watching as much. Could be you had like a quote viral hit that was doing well and now it's starting to slow down and that's your overall kind of watch time. Like those are the things that could be happening. This is unfortunately not enough information to know. It doesn't mean that like your channel was just always great and all of a sudden it's not. It could just be some outside, um, you know, influence behind that. After roasting me, Travis, that was an excellent mm. answer. Well done, well done. Uh, Dan can tackle this one. Huh? Romeo of the contest. How do I reach 500 subs posting mm. gameplay shorts? Easy. Make good gameplay shorts. I just have a bit more. Than I'm that. not trying to be flippant. I'm. I'm literally. Look at. I want you to be a student of shorts. I want you to take some time. Part of your research is to just watch shorts. I want you to stop on the ones that are specific about gameplay so the algorithm gets used to you watching like the ones that you want to see, right? And ask yourself as you're stopping your scroll, why did I stop on this one though? Like other than the fact that it's gameplay, what was the hook of this? The first couple seconds, what happened? What noise was there? What caption? What, what caught my interest? And that's really what it's about. People don't want to watch you in a short just doing something, you know, mundane. You want to save the best moments for your shorts and you need context. People need to know what's going on, even if they weren't there for maybe the long form video or the live stream or whatever it might be. So they need to be well edited in that regard. They don't need a ton of effects, but it needs to be like good, awesome clips. And that's that's really the advice. Make good gameplay clips that people actually want to stop scrolling for. 
UK Medic uh, asks, love getting my achievement certificates. Keeps me motivated. Oh, well, we're very appreciative of um, you enjoying those certificates. Right after this live stream, I have, let me just check, 54,790 certificates to make an email out to <laughs> all of you. What UK Medic is obviously talking about here is the fact that if you download vidIQ, and this is a completely free part of our tool, you'll get certificates uh, for achievements like hitting 100 subscribers, 1,000 subscribers. It's kind of like um, certificates before the play button, it's like ramping you up to that big YouTube celebration. So make sure to download um, vidIQ to enjoy them. And as I say, that is a completely free part of our tool. Uh, another question here from Palette Fortress. Will you ever go back to video reviews? This is an interesting question, Dan. You used to host video reviews on a Wednesday where we wouldn't look at the channels. We would click play and then talk about hooks, intros, audio, lighting, et cetera, et cetera. What do we think? Uh, I, if if we do, maybe it's because John wants to dive in on some of that stuff on his Wednesday yeah. streams. This might be but John Project, might my, my, maybe if, if he wants to i think it was fun while it lasted it just became a lot like i would do the tuesday streams and then i'd have the wednesday streams and they were so similar to one another from my from where i'm sitting and it's just just a lot i you know that that time is now spent like making videos and things like that in short dan just got fed up with doing them quiz uh lunacy when creating a short, are the tunes listed when clicking add sounds at free? Mm -hmm. Also, does choosing a highly used tune help push your short? I think the answer to the first question is, hang on, for, for, for Travis? Yes. Uh, yes, completely <laughs> free, no copyright implications whatsoever. Uh, it will be monetized if you're in the um, YouTube partner program. It will kind of attach itself to that popular sound. And I know this can be quite a big thing in TikTok where people have all use the same sound and kind of generate this popularity around the sound. Um, I guess it needs to be almost like a, how did you pronounce it earlier, Travis? Meme, mem, mem. It, yeah, mem. It has to have some mem virality, I think, to really have that sound effect have any impact on discoverability. It, it needs to be intentional, I would say. Yeah. A lot of trending sounds I've noticed on like TikToks and shorts belong in the video because of the context of the video. They're not just using them as a shortcut, if that makes sense. It's like, oh, this this sound inspired me to make something, so I'm gonna make, you know, I'm gonna jump on the trend and make something with it. Uh, we have a new member, and they get this sound effect. Beyond Ever Valley, you will be known this week as. Booting your Windows XP machine down. You didn't already give someone that sound? No, I gave them the oh. login one. Okay. See, see, I was paying attention. <laughs> uh, hey, it's Blue Pro. I have hey. 882 and had 700 last week. What's going on? Copyright strikes? I don't know what they're talking about. No, no, about. I think he went the other way around. I have 800. Has seven, in other words, I got more subscribers. Yeah. Or views. That's good, one right? Of the two. That's a good or, thing. Or it's dislike, want, right? It could be, it could be dislikes, it could be hate comments. It, that's true. It could the, be the, sandwiches. Yeah. The, the the missed and important word. Don't send another super chat clarifying what it is because no, we haven't yeah, got yeah. time to read it out now. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to be honest. <laughs> Does face cam affect streams and videos? Face cam the, effect, like the bit rate, or I think sorry. they're just saying being a faceless channel versus not being a faceless uh, channel. I think. I think it's again it depends like earlier i recommended a horror channel like I, I feel like the content would be more entertaining if they were on camera that's just my opinion of course um it so yeah again it depends uh there's there's plenty of channels that don't put their face in like say gameplay content or whatever and do just fine it's kind of your personal goals personal tastes and uh just think about if it adds something to the content I, I would say with a live stream, you're probably looking for more uh, engagement. So trying to create more of a connection with between your audience. So I True. would yeah. advise in that sense, it's probably better to have someone in front of camera. So you're able to talk directly to your audience. Here's a question that's going to crop up more and more beyond the tape going from. Well, I think I, I think they're saying they're going to use AI text to speech. Oh, no, they're on. going to start using Sorry. the real voice. Oh, right. Um, that's a good thing we would we would we would typically say right yeah i think um, so certainly in the long long run like to begin with maybe you're not good on the microphone and you're going to stutter you're going to have weird accents like i have this kind of weird 
YouTube accent, because if I talk normally, I'd be talking like this, and it's a very Yorkshire accent, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. And everyone would think I'm from Winterfell in Game of Thrones, etc., etc. Uh, where was, was I going with that? I was trying to say that uh, using your own voice is going to make you unique. It's going to brand yourself more powerfully in the long run. So Dan and I definitely would encourage this. Like anything that you can create organically as opposed to through AI and automation that's powerful for your audience, we would encourage you to do. Mm -hmm. So I was completely misinterpreting the question. I was thinking, uh, is AI text-to-speech okay? Uh, Travis and I had a little bit of an interesting conversation uh, yesterday, how he found a channel which was apparently using an AI version of my voice, which I said sounds nothing like me. But then Travis said, yeah, but you sound like that to everybody else. It's true. And it made it's me true. just want to quit. <laughs> it's absolutely true. Wait, was I wrong, Dan? No, you were not wrong. <laughs> I, that's, I showed that's, it to someone else too, and they they did not hear the difference. That is so depressing. So <laughs> depressing. Uh, Spectre Gaming and Reacts. You're probably all wanting to know what this video is now. I don't know if you can... Don't give it any like, views. Don't, yeah, no, right. no. <laughs> uh, just past 500 subs. Uh, just need 3,000 watch hours. How can I make a good hook to keep an audience watching for a gaming video? Okay, wait. Create stakes. Congrats on 500 subs, uh, 3,000 watch hours. Uh, it sounds like you're already doing something right. Which is great, but yes, stakes are always good, and uh, not not the food kind. Like, what is going to happen if you don't achieve whatever goal it is you're trying to achieve? Like, if you're trying to do these more like engaging challenge style videos, for example. Like, again, make yourselves students of YouTube. Watch different creators, get different perspectives, and and take notes and, and gather some more ideas and stuff from like channels that have been doing this for a bit. You can cross this off your weekly live stream bingo. Somebody has asked for a channel audit in the Super Chats, and that is not what we do, but we'll read it out anyway. Epic Fuzz. Me next, please. I've been making videos for two months. That's great. Continue to make videos, have fun, and listen to all of the advice that we've just given you over the last two hours. Well, but by the way, real quick, just so I don't forget, yeah. I will tell a lot of people in the chat how to get a uh, channel audit today, potentially mm. today. But oh, let's finish up. Yeah, just right. remind me at the end. Oh, right. Okay, that's a tease. You got to stick stick around for at least another ten minutes. Uh, six two six rips. I feel like my channel is doing well for what I have, but could have could not having a legit PC stop me from progressing later down the line. Right now, I'm using my laptop for everything gaming wise. Okay, this is a classic question of I do not feel as if I have the right technology. Uh, to do this YouTube thing and we always say that's an excuse use what you have right now and you can invest later because skills at this point in your journey are far more important than those incremental improvements that you can get with better uh, technology and resources yep all right, Dan just agrees. Fact. Yeah. Done. All right. Well, I will end the Super Chats there. We managed to get through them all. Uh, well done, everybody. Uh, job done there. So I've just got to pause the music, and we can get back to some more channel audits. And I'm trying to remember, what did we review last? Was it a gaming? Yes, it was a gaming channel because it was the first gaming channel. So what one we need channel. to do now, uh, exactly right. We need to go to non-gaming. Five five eight. So again, everybody, what between number four do you and think we're going to draw? Sorry, Dan. Between four and five hundred. Between well, four and five hundred. Five fifty. Okay. Dan, for once, is correct. He no, is what? correct. It's one eighty nine. Uh, what do you mean? Channel, well, you said between four and five hundred. Channel. It was I thought you covered eighty nine. What are you talking right, about? Sorry, sorry, bro. Uh, <laughs> I miss. I misheard you. Bro. Uh, it's getting late in a live stream. We are now looking at Aspen does <clears throat> anything, and they are at seven and a half thousand subscribers. Uh, I think, hang on, are they a short channel? Yes, they are a short channel. So let's just quickly get on to the shorts where they are. Getting some spiky views. So hundreds of views, thousands of views. What is the, the, the content that does best for them? Uh, I keep seeing these videos. 
whereby I think they're, would this be maybe like gaming the YouTube metrics a little bit hmm. by asking questions in the shorts and you respond through a like or a comment or a share or a subscribe? Maybe. Yeah, that's possible. It, like do an action to like have some result, I guess. I mean, okay, those go are, up, 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 up. yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, please try and avoid the kind of text you we've seen at one of our shots. In fact, we should probably pause it there because I don't know if we're going to hit anything else on this channel that might be inappropriate. I, I missed uh, this gag now, but that's kind of a red flag. So yeah, yeah apologies. Yeah, but yep, we yep, saw something yep. there that we didn't like the look of. So let's Dang audit it. another channel. Dan, what was the um, number this time? Oh, uh, five hundred something. 500 something. My 400 to 500 thing again. You are incorrect. So we'll do 418. And this is says it's a non gaming channel. We're going to do another non gaming channel because um, this one I kind of lost its chance just because of a, the pitch. 8 bit axe. Is this a gaming channel? Uh, oh, maybe, maybe it is. No, I don't think it is. Uh, well, hang on. There's Pokemon then. Sometimes, there. sometimes it's a gaming channel. Right. Okay, so here's another thing about his live streams. Yeah, we asked this question: Are you a gaming channel? And you want you say no. Right. Oh, hang on, that's shorts. So maybe their shorts are non-gaming. But okay. So we've got a bit of nature. I see here. some snakes, some dogs. Yeah. If they're a self-admitted non-gaming channel, and we're looking for gaming channels. No, no, this we, is a game. We, this is a, this is a non-gaming channel. It's supposed to be. Oh, I thought you, okay. I thought you were, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, okay. Channel focus on longs or shorts, regardless. I, I, mm. I never know what I'm going to get with this channel. A lot of subscribe buttons and stuff. It seems like they're very invested in how many subscribers they're getting. <laughs> yeah. That, but that was yeah. The like what's the content about? Um, why, why do you subscribe to channels viewer? What, why would you do that? And it's because you're enjoying what you're seeing. So make things that people enjoy, they will subscribe. You don't need to put these giant red buttons everywhere. It's distracting. I don't, am I going to... Sub for a cookie. All right. Now that you've done that. Sub for a cookie. Okay. No, I love that. that. It's cool. No, it's I, I Sub want, for a... I want a cookie now. I do actually. Yeah, want I do want a, I want a good cookie now. But then, like, how does that relate to the... Pokemon stuff, favorite Pokemon music afterwards, and the Pokemon stuff before it, and then a dog wag. Well, is that a, no? That's not a dog, is it? Yeah, I think that's a dog. That's a goat, and I think it's wagging its tail. <laughs> so, channel, what are you, what are you sniggering out there, Dan? <laughs> oh, sorry, it just took you a really long time to <laughs> determine if that well, was a dog or not. So, so let's get into the details here. I thought that was the face of a <laughs> really. Sh- Mm. Oh no! Wait, what? It's not a face. You thought that was a face? (laughs) How? Why would you? Where's the eyes? I'm Uh, questioning if Rob has a dog or just like a pile of clothing. Let let let. Okay. What? What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? (laughs) Rob, did you just wake up? Where I'm so confused. Right. I look away for one second and all of a sudden I come back and he's looking at dogs. That looks like a dog to me. Right. Can we what should we do? Should we pick another channel? Or a goat? You want to risk another channel. Let's take a let's let's do let's get real spicy and just take one from the chat. Let's do one of those things where you put in a hashtag and then we Oh, you want to do that? Just do one of those. Because why not? What could go wrong? uh, let, Look at how nice set, I am, chat. Love me. Uh, Acknowledge me. <laughs> let me set this up. Right. So, Travis, we need a um, we need, need a, a word. Uh, it's that one, isn't it? So, what we're we gonna have? Uh, let's do freebie because this is a freebie. F R E E B I E. Oops. <laughs> Y'all owe me for this. So, all you need to do is type this in once. You don't have to type this in multiple times. And two people have already done this correctly. Now 10 people have done it correctly. We'll wait until this gets above 100 submissions. And then we'll pick uh, one of the freebie channel audits. Uh, Disclaimer, 
if you have a very common name, it may be difficult yeah. to find your channel True. because we're literally doing it from your channel name. But anyway, yeah. let's do this. We'll draw one. Wow, we wait. We can get the oh, you did. Right. It was a hundred already? Oh yeah. Oh, anyway, got there very quickly. <clears throat> kind of. Derek's Lawn right. Rescue. What a cool name. It looks like a cool channel profile image as well. I think we're going to be able to find this channel. And yep. we did. So I pre present to you, Travis, your freebie mm. channel, which is Derek's Lawn Rescue. First of all, 1,000 subscribers. In 50, view in 50 videos. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's wow. a good return on investment. Absolutely. And I think the reason why is because you know what you're getting. What do they call it? Uh, it's what's on the tin. Is that what they say over in yeah. the UK? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you look in 10 days ago, you got uh, almost 2,000 views on the video. It's so obvious what you're going to get. And the nice thing about that is, is when someone finds this channel and they, they watch a, a video or two, they know what they're going to get. More lawn related stuff. And there are some people that love their lawn and all they want is to watch stuff about their lawn. This is the type of channel that will grow as they continue to put out more content. <clears throat> when you have a channel that has like a thousand or so subscribers, you should not be getting thousands of views every so often, but he's getting thousands of views every so often. This We've been talking about this. I'm so glad this, this channel came up. We talk about channel focus and people, I don't think they think about this, but when they see a channel like this, they go, well, they're, they're lucky. No, they're not. They literally put together a channel with good strategy behind it. Um, maybe um, some of the thumbnails are pretty okay. I, we can probably pick one and make it slightly better, but I love that you can come to this channel and you know what you're going to get. So YouTube knows how to find more viewers that are going to be interested in your content. When you're Very making easy random to find content, views, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Very easy. When you're putting random stuff out, YouTube's putting people here and here and here, and it never connects. This channel connects. This channel will be at 10,000 subscribers within a year if they continue doing what they're doing. Easy. Are there shorts doing similar to what the uh, other channels do in the space where they go and like touch up people's lawns for free and things like that? Or like, just that storytelling, I found this lawn and it's a total mess. Let's go see if they want us to clean it up. Yeah, I've seen yeah. channels like that. Yeah. I saw, like a video of, I saw a video of some lady that went to like a graveyard and like cleaned up one of the one of the. Oh, graves. gosh, I saw someone talking about that person. <laughs> oh, my God, that's of, how big it is. Yeah, Jeez. asking a lot of uh, very go good questions. Oh, I love time lapse. It's great. The backyard while you bring everything in. Well, come to find out. That the backyard oh, he's down there. I didn't realize he oh. was um, <laughs> talking, but hidden behind all of his hex. Oh, yeah, yeah. He probably doesn't need to be there. But we're going to go ahead and knock it down for him and get him situated. Love so great. Really yeah. I love that. Now, um, question. Given the time of year and uh, people are probably getting back out into their gardens, in the northern heaven sphere at least, do you think they should lean a little into some evergreen tutorials or do you think that would be the wrong direction for this channel? I, anything lawn related, which includes um, the tools in which to keep your lawn, uh, you know, good would work. And even yeah. things like fertilizers, like anything that related that would work in something like this. Because what I'm seeing mostly from the, the from the picture of the videos is uh, there's a, there's a challenge or the stakes. Like in this one, they only lost their dog in the overgrown lawn. Or this one is like rescuing a lawn that's been consigned to the overgrowing weeds and whatever. And, you know, if, if you've ever uh, come across a video, which is like the six best tips to keep your lawn uh, manicured over the summer, how would the audience react to that? I'm, I'm curious, but there's a potential new audience there as well. You know what else? Like this channel can make some pretty good money with affiliates. Yeah, let's. Uh, I I'd think quick what, too. Let's click on one of these just to get the uh, hook of one of these videos and see if we're doing any affiliate links in the description. All right, so today we're gonna go ahead and do a little walkthrough on the yard we got. All right, so this is the alleyway. As you can see, I mean, it's pretty tall. It's back got some here. tense music there as well. I would have cut out the the talking now, head at the beginning and just started right exactly what it says coming up. Pretty much mm. the tallest. But I think this could be a bit snappier as well. Yeah. yeah. So the coming up should have ended point. at this point, and we should have got into yes. the story, in my opinion. Yeah. You're right. Because that this implies I'm going to see this again. Because yes. Yeah. Very long. Oh yeah, super so, long. Yeah. So maybe some editing um, improvements we made there. As for links, there's nothing there, Travis. 
There's no yeah. attempt well, I mean, to monetize. He probably doesn't realize it. He yeah. probably doesn't realize it. But imagine if he like if he does a like if he has a video where he I don't know if he really gets creative with it and finds like a huge yard and he does all this stuff. Uh, maybe he goes to a neighbor or something says, "Listen, I, I want to shoot a YouTube video. I'm willing to do your yard if you let me film it." And they say yes. And then you use a bunch of different products and have links to all those products, like affiliate links, um, bro, like that sort of thing can bring you much more money than, than monetization ever will by a large margin, a large margin. That's if they want to, because there may right. be an altruistic approach to this, like being a volunteer lawn care person. They, they don't want to make any money, obviously just see Good. what's happening in their community and i want to just improve people's gardens which is also like a a truly <laughs> humbling thing to, to to i guess the not only the fact that they're doing that but they're also um turning it into youtube content as well yeah without really capitalizing on the financial aspect of this yeah so i got i got a thing i want to do real quick i want to talk about real quick all right if we're almost wrapping. Are we wrapping up? Right. Almost. Let me, just real quick. Um, yeah. I want to answer this question. We no more super chats though. If you're posting one long form video per week and you miss the deadline, should you try finishing the video for quality or release it now for quantity? Just just quality. <laughs> it's okay if you miss an upload date. That's a self imposed limitation on you and your content. I say finish the video and then put it out. I don't know if anyone else wants to weigh in on that, but I just want to answer that real quick. That I couldn't agree more, Dan. All right. Now All right. right, two things. Number one, um, if you're here and you have vidIQ Boost, you may not re may not realize that you actually have access to a private Discord, one that used to be the vidIQ Max Discord. Now, what makes that so much so special is the fact that the people that are in there are super smart, which includes some of the vidIQ coaches that kind of pay attention to what's going on there. I'm in there sometimes, um, and people are getting channel audits every single day by people who know what they're talking about, not just random like, "What do you think of my channel?" This, that, and the other, like actual people that know what they're talking about you have access to it if you have boost i'm going to put a link in the description or in the uh, chat if you uh have boost if you click this link it'll take you to the vidIQ uh, chat and it'll allow you to link your discord to um to your account it'll do all the magic and then all of a sudden you're gonna have a new discord channel which does crazy cool things it allows you to participate in a bunch of cool streams we do and also be surrounded by creators who know what they're talking about and will literally audit you today. today. Not today, not tomorrow, not three weeks from now, today. And more than we do. I mean, when Power Dragon gives you a channel audit, you feel like you just have learned the world about your channel that you didn't know. Like, it's, it's a wrap, just letting you know. You need to go ahead and click that link, link in, get in there, say hi. There's already people in there chatting. Do the thing. You'd be surprised. And you already have access to it if you have Boost. Boost, not the one-on-one -on -one coaching is different. This is yes. boost. Well, I'm not talking about one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm one -on -one talking about coaching is more like expensive. The, this is yeah, yeah. boost. I'm talking about something else. I'm talking about yeah. you, most people have boost. Get that. Do that thing. Um, and all one other thing. Um, and if you have one-on-one -on -one coaching, I, I think you do as well. Uh, so I, I'm just gonna throw this out. We don't have to do this. Let's do a real quick vote. One in the chat, if someone wants to get their channel roasted, I can go get a friend. Um, it'd be one person and only if you want to get roasted and it's not going to be, I'm going to make good channel audit contact with it. It's going to be like, you're going to wish you never got audit, You never got roasted yeah, one. If you want to see a, a channel roast, I just have to go get a friend real quick. Uh Oh, listen, I'll be back. Let me, let me, let me step off here for a second. I'll be right back. <laughs> Can okay. anybody still see and hear me? Yeah. Cause my computer just had a complete mental breakdown it literally did this and now i can't see my browser or anything oh <laughs> I, yeah. I, so yeah so i can talk and you can hear me um but the browser that has stream yards in it dan is just completely broken uh so can i just refresh my screen and see if i come back here yeah if not it was nice knowing you all and dan will trail us out i will <laughs> please okay well now i don't know what to do Everyone left. Literally, okay, I'm just here alone now. I can't I can't do anything for your channels by myself now because I'm too scared. But uh here, th there is there is somebody who can come on and help.
<laughs> what a smooth aftertaste that is. Absolutely trash. Oh, I'm back, but also Savage is here. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all appropriate ages, Dr. Savage is here to let you know that your channel probably isn't as good as you think it is. And I can't wait to dig into this, at least for one. I got paid uh, $39.95, so I can only do one chat. Uh, let's figure out who's going to come in here and get their channel Savage, because I'm going to tell you right now, your channel is nowhere near as good as you think it is. Let's get this done. Let's go. Uh, how do you want to do this, Savage? On um, random... Savage Audit. Hashtag Savage right, Audit. Okay. I got no Hashtag time for shenanigans. Savage Audit. Yeah, it's French. Savage. Let me just type that in. So, mm -hmm. same as before, folks. But the disclaimer is, you're not really getting the audit you really want or need. I need to get these uh, shirts frankly. sold again. These YouTube streets are savage. Uh, they still yeah. won't allow me to sell them. I will at some point. The Savage Tish made this many years ago. It's a great shirt. I love it. Shout out to Savage Tish. Mm, Moderating as always. And you've broken our chat, Savage. Of course I have. Awesome. Because here's the thing when you give someone a good product, they take it and they take it and they take it till there's none left. Then you sell it on the on the dollar trees around the world. They're now like five dollars. What's up with that? Dan edits. Well, Dan, this might be your final edit. Let's see what <laughs> 10, happens. Ten thousand subscribers for Dan ed edits. Here we go. Okay, Dan, what let me let me make this picture bigger because I can't see what's going on here. All right. What is the picture of the person? What is this? Some type of a boy band review? What what is this? I look no no, look at the, the second video. It looks like a boy band. What is that? Scroll down. Yeah, what is that? Is that a boy band? Listen, I can't keep up with the boy bands anymore. Let me tell you something. Back in the day when boy bands were good, like in sync and backstreet boys. Now you got, I don't even know what you got anymore. To be quick, perfectly honest, I ain't seen nothing that, that's tickled my fancy in, uh, since 1996. All right. Young Walker School being the best Percy Jackson. What does that mean? What does any of that mean? It sounds like a lot of nerd speak. Dan, what does that mean? I, I don't know. I don't, what is a Percy Jackson? I think is that's he a, one of the Jackson I think Five? That's a character in a series. Yeah. Does this see. person have seven videos total? That's it? Yeah. And he came for my advice. Do you wait a minute? 15,000 views. 22,000 views. This is fake. Let me Massive click on one outliers. of these. Let me see what's going on. This is obviously fake. Let's take a look at this. It All can't right, be one, real. Which one do you want to respect? Let's do the 15,000 because okay. ain't no way a boy band got 15,000 views in like right. one day. We're the cast of Percy Jackson and we are with BuzzFeed to take the quiz. <laughs> Oh, okay, so we again. stole it. I That's exactly what you. we do here at the VidIQ Savage Academy. We steal other people's uh, content and put it on our own channel so we can get all the views. Thank you. This is a savage student that I've, I've, I remember this student, actually. This student came through one time. He tried to savage me, right? So what he did was he took all the courses. He put his name on the top and tried to sell them back to me. That is a savage student that I can get behind. Congratulations for being the world's most savage student ever. You have now graduated with this channel. Congrats. <laughs> graduate. Well done. Well done. Anything else? Nah, you didn't pay enough for a second one. Let's let's uh, let's move <laughs> this thing along. Let's get out of here. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll play the music at this point. Thank you, Savage, as always, for your unique perspective on the world of YouTube. Uh, Dan, honor and a privilege as always. Uh, we'll work on your guess the claw numbers for next week. Final thoughts from you. And then Savage has a prepaid 30 second uh, outro. Okay, uh, take breaks, take breaks, recharge your batteries and then make content. Savage, you got 30 seconds. The worst thing that I've heard in the news over the last couple of weeks is this. Dollar Tree's going up to like $5 a, a, an item. What is going on? The economy's going down. We're losing everything. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. So while you have a little bit of money and you get your tax return, Savage Academy's putting it on sale. $159 every 30 minutes. It's down. $75 every 30 minutes. <laughs> ah!